All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 601. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I know we have um, under the liquor license renewals. Um, Therese given me there was two others that came in after the packets were printed. Um, we'll also have Babe's Bar and Central Market. I don't know what class liquor licenses are those ones, Therese? Um, Babe's is a first and third class plus an outside consumption permit. One in third and outside, okay. And uh, Central Market is a second class. Two. Yeah, they came in after I did the agendas and the packets, of course. So, um, okay. that's what they are. So I think that was all that I was told to add. Is that correct, Therese? Yes. Okay. Did anybody else have anything else to amend the agenda, or are we good to go forward as amended? So moved. Second. Hey, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and we do have appointments this evening, so we will do the appointments first, and then we will go to public comment. Um, I guess if there happens to be a long, long gap in our schedule between appointments, so we could always go to public comment. But um, you never know. Appointments sometimes they they go right through quickly, and other times it may take a while. So, um, Thomas, are do you know if Rita is coming tonight? I was under the assumption she would. Yeah. But I can I can speak for for the equity committee and for the for the side with the website uh, issues. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I I had told her what night. I didn't send her the link again, but um I figured she would uh, find it on the website or something. So I didn't think twice about it. So um and Nicole, do you have any other energy committee members that are going to be joining you, or are you good to go? Chris, um, just Chris and I. Okay. Do you do you want um, Thomas? Do you, would you rather us just go with the energy committee quickly, and then we can come back? That gives Rita an opportunity to jump on, or what do you think? I'll leave that totally up to you. It doesn't matter to me. Do you, Do you plan on being on for the meeting, Thomas? Well, not the whole meeting, but a good chunk, yeah. Oh, there's Rita. Okay. Oh, here she oh there is. you go. Yeah. I was just Hello. Email. Figured it out. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> awesome. All right. So we were just talking about appointments there, Rita. So we uh, we were making sure that everybody that was going to be part of the appointments was here, um, which you weren't at that time. So we were just talking about either maybe going with the energy committee first and come circling back or whatnot. But seeing that you're here, um, is there everybody? Uh, between yourself, uh, Thomas is on. Is there anybody else you expect to be part of the discussion? Or are you good to move forward? Yeah, I think uh, I don't think anyone else is planning planning on being here necessarily. Okay. So we will stay right on schedule then. So we have the appointment at six o two. Six o two. I don't think we've ever had an appointment at six o two, Therese, but. I know. Well, I figured it'd take <laughs> the agenda and all that. It's a new that. one. You, you really had that. You were By God, down to the minute. So. And uh, Rita's here just to talk about um, the committee and um, and website for the committee. And as we had been talking about the last two meetings now, I think, we were talking about a uh, policy for um, for the website, the town town official committee websites that we're working yeah, on yeah. now. So it kind of rolls all together, so. So yeah, I put a copy uh, or a piece of Rita's email in the um, in your packet, just letting mm -hmm. you know that she, um, they're looking to discuss having a web, having their own website um, independent from the town um, and possibly have donations from local businesses pay for it. Um, on the website, uh, it stated that they hope to include resources, work we're doing, their story, vision, bios for committee members, and email where people are able to contact them. And um, I had told Rita in advance that we were, you know, the social media policy, I've sent it to Rita. So the whole equity and inclusion committee, I think, has it now. Um, oh, I don't. Everybody, I've distributed it. So 
to other committee members as well as employees. So I'm waiting, um, I'm asking for all the feedback, including select board members by the 24th of February, just so everybody knows where we're at with that policy. Okay, I just, yeah, I, I don't think I, I missed that somehow if, if you sent it to me, Trace, I'm sorry, okay. I, didn't, I didn't get it or haven't looked it over. Yeah. I'll send it back to you, no problem. Okay. It's Thanks. 17 pages, so it's a lengthy one, but I will send it. Great. Okay. Um, yeah, so that with that being said, I don't know how much of that would be, I'm sure it surely would be helpful to have that um, information as like moving forward right now. Um, but I think, yeah, I think we can at least explain like why, why, why we want a website. Um, and then knowing that we also are very, very willing and able and wanting to work with whatever the town decides as far as um, yeah the social media policies and working with you and helping to helping to give feedback and help form that so we're very on board that's excellent thank you yeah um, so I guess in general <laughs> we we would like a website um, and largely because um, we want, I mean, us being a, a committee that is about equity and inclusion, wanting it to be very accessible. And I think that the website right now with the, the town, it would, it would very easily get, get lost and maybe people wouldn't be able to find it as, as readily. Um, having a link from the town website to, to ours would be great, um, being, a, being a committee that is part of the town. And um, um, yeah, so I think largely we, we would like for the town to know that we are we are here and there's we would like to have bios and um, information about our, our mission and what projects we're working on and any resources. And that might also take up a lot more bandwidth and updating than what we would ever expect or want like the the town to manage and so we are also planning on and able to do any sort of updating along with the regulations that that are set and any funding of the website we have we have donors already so those wouldn't be an issue um and i think that's largely yeah where we're coming from is it it's it seems like having a an independent site that is also, I mean, connected, seems like it would be more accessible and more straightforward and more um, inclusive of it with, with our, our mission of wanting to get the word out that we are, are here and approachable. It's also because uh, we were thinking that the town is uh, stretched pretty thin when it comes to, uh, like you said the last time, Therese, when it comes to social media and uh, internet presence. Um, so we didn't want to put any more pressure on the town for, for that kind of stuff. So um, we have some ability to develop it ourselves and we would also uh, be maintaining it ourselves as the committee. And that would uh, take the pressure off the town for that. Yeah, I did say that it was, yeah, because we just, we just don't have the manpower for that, you know, for, for too many sites. The basis of the social media policy, while it's large, it covers a lot because as I'd said to Rita in an email, um, you know, we have open meeting law, there's, you know, there's a lot of regulations. Um, the bend of the social media policy is basically for us to disseminate information, not really get into a back and forth conversation with someone because then it can violate the open meeting law and you have to keep all these records and things like that. So um, one thing that I would like that will definitely come out of the social media policy is like a terms of use so that basically any website or or Facebook page or whatever that the select board allows is going to have like little terms of use so everybody understands that it's a town policy and that it's um sorry my husband is cleaning the pellet stove <laughs> so if you can hear that um so anyways so it's um so to make sure everybody has the same terms of use and to make sure that people know what the rules are if you're going to use that website or that facebook page here's the rules also a little bit of, you know contact information that way there's continuity between 
everybody between, um, you know, every single site that has anything to do with the town, then there would have continuity. So those are some things that we're hoping, you know, to gather um, out of the, out of, certainly out of the policy um, to make sure moving forward that that works. So, um, and like I said, I was looking for everything to be back to me by the 24th of February, so. I don't know how the board feels about you guys having your own website. I don't know. And I think, you know, not, you know, not talking for the board, but, you know, because we're still working on the policy, but, you know, the intent is, is for the committees to have um, tools to get their information out to individuals as well as um, individuals to be able to contact people, right? So that's, um, and social media is a great tool. So um, I think one thing that kind of, has kind of come to our attention here over the last, you know, few months is that we have all these different web pages out there that aren't tied together and how do we monitor them? And, and the biggest thing with it being an official town um, page is that the open meeting laws is big. So like if three board members commented on a post, then technically you're violating the open meeting laws. Um, so it, you know, it gets kind of tricky at that point. So I think what we're looking at doing now, we haven't got through all the details, but in a big picture anyways, is to have, to allow the committees to have what we're gonna call official town um, committee web pages. So they would be linked officially. Um, and each, each committee would have, um, let's say an administrator that would be in charge of that uh, web page for their committee. Um, and that, that way it's easy for us to, let's say if we get a complaint or there's something going on that we can just go to that one individual to say, you know, what are we doing or, you know, type deal. Um, so I guess we're looking at like having one person. So maybe it's Rita, maybe you're the administrator for your page and maybe Nicole is the administrator for her page. <clears throat> at least that way, Therese can kind of just go to like one or two people to address things. Um, and then, you know, I guess the way we're looking at it right now is, you know, what type of information should be on those pages, you know, um, you know, obviously things like schedules and um, uh, information that you might be working on inside the committee, um, contact per people so that you can have that maybe one on one back and forth um, feedback, but we have to remember we can't do it in a group setting so it's kind of tricky. So, you know, emails, contact numbers, if somebody in the public wants to contact you for more information, that kind of stuff. Um, some of the things we have to be careful of being like an official town page is things like um, sponsorships, um, because that could, that could really start off as a, a very innocent thing that could turn into something big. Um, not to mention there's bookkeeping involved if you're taking money and, you know, um, those types of things. So. Um, there's nothing to say that you can't have an unofficial web page, but if you did, it would it wouldn't be an official town uh, committee page. Uh, that would have to be something like, you know, the BRI. To, you know, you have something separate um, than that that individual committee. Um, we definitely would, um, like we've been talking about, you know, things like you know having other resource tools that might be, you know, state or government um, type. And you know where people can get more information if they're looking for a certain topic or, and and I think we, it's a challenge. Like some bigger towns have the ability to actually have somebody that just manages the web page all the time. We we unfortunately uh, you know we don't have a lot of uh, resources um, at the office, but um, you know we would at least like to link it to our page so that people could, you know, go from one page to the other um, type deal. Um, yeah, because right now it seems like people have, you know, Facebook pages. I know the Energy Committee has one, Conservation. So we're going to, you know, when I've sent the policy to Nicole, and I think my advice, uh, Rita, to the select board was to have you guys wait because I would, until the policy is developed, and that way you have all the, the languages there. So if we have a terms of use or whatever it is we're going to do, I don't want anyone, someone on your end to start designing something and then be like, dang, you know, we spent all this time, but now we have to do X, Y, or Z. Because basically the goal is to always encourage people to attend duly warned meetings. That's what we're looking for and to disseminate information. So um, 
I also, like I said, I wanted to get the policy done, approved by the select board and get all the feedback in. I know right now I've got some feedback, there's sections that are duplicate and we need to kind of, you know, narrow down a little bit the scope of it. But um, I had you come to the select board because I didn't know how anybody else got permission to get a Facebook <laughs> page. I don't yeah. know if they ever did. I don't know how it worked. So um, I'm going to make everybody <clears throat> come back through that has one. And if we adopt the policy, they're going to have to come back to the select board and kind of. And I think that's, know what's out you know, there. that's where we're at with it is just, you know, you know, who, who is in charge of who the, has one? <laughs> because it's town related. So it's, you know, I, I'm assuming to date it's, uh, you know, Paul's been giving everybody permission or something, you know, but yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's been, ran, you know, it's been random, you know, we've had a couple of different town managers, so it could have been town manager, it could have been nobody. Um, so we're just trying to find a real good formal system. And, and I, I think, um, Therese, I mean, we're kind of looking to hopefully have this policy moved at the next meeting. Does that sound right? No, it doesn't sound right. Oh. It'll be March because I'm asking for everybody's feedback by February 24th. And then it's going to be, you know, then I'll make another round of it. So it'll be the probably the hopefully the first meeting in March that you'll see it again. And then we'll see if anybody has any changes. Um, uh, you know, once we get through the second draft right now, I've received input from um, Dietrich, from Paul Valley, um, and that's it. So everybody else, you know, is due the 24th. So I'm hoping we'll be able to narrow this thing down from 17 pages to maybe even, you know, 13, 14, and there's a lot to it because of the laws, but um, out of it, like I said, I would like to have some things that are going to be universal. So everybody, if they went onto the equity and inclusion or the Facebook page for energy or conservation, they would see, you know, some continuity because the terms of use and some few things would be on everybody's page. So um, as I said, I'm personally not opposed to you having a website. I just think we all need to be in agreement on it. So I think um, I gave some feedback down to Therese, but I think there are three things that, that I key in on. Uh, the most important being the level of liability that the town uh, would be under if something happened that there was a discussion that happened that got out of hand or if somebody took offense at a certain posting uh, you know, the level of town liability. The, the next thing I, I think that is a big difference between setting up criteria for Facebook or front porch forum, as opposed to an official website. I think there's a lot more involved in, in a website and a lot more potential. So I think we almost need two sets of guidelines, one for a website, you know, if we're going to allow that and then one for Facebook, uh, you know, Front Porch Forum is, is looked at. There, there are folks that look at that and they, they really tone down the, the uh, uh, you know, possible offensive uh, comments and things. And then the, the third thing is I wonder if we need to get, uh, after we come up with something that we need to have that reviewed by uh, the VLC, VLCT or the insurance, you know, company to see if there's any excuse me, liability issues that may, that they may not cover if, if there was an issue, if we got into some legal, you know, problems. So I think there's a ways to go yet before we, you know, it's, there's going to be a lot to it. And I don't think it's going to rush through a, a, any, any quick fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so I can tell you that, uh, that it was a base policy. I got the policy from VLCT. That's mm -hmm. where the social media policy came from. Um, they give you a little, you know, it's a model, the LCC yep. policy that I started with. Uh, the town would bear 100% liability if you give authorization for these to happen. Then, yeah, if something happens, um, then the town bears all the liability. So, for sure. Um, and at this point, you're correct. The only one who has a website is the town. Uh, the Energy Committee the um, Conservation Commission, uh, Peavine Park, um, they, the other people, whoever ha have the other groups, not people, are just, they have Facebook pages. So um, if this, if you allow these guys to have a website, they'll be the only ones that I'm aware of with an actual website. Um, everybody else is just a page, but I see Lindley has her hand up. Yeah, just sort of along the lines of the liability. Um, so in, in general, I'm supportive of 
uh, the town committees having separate websites, and I think actually even them managing those websites and doing their updates and all of that is actually great because it takes that burden off the town. And I think the piece that, and this is kind of a comment mostly for Therese, but as as we develop that policy to kind of keep in mind what's what's the sort of transaction between whoever is developing and updating that website to actually making the updates and, and then making them live because I could see easily, and this is not to pin blame on anybody, but just a scenario of I've done a bunch of updates and I'm so excited I just hit live and no one has had a second set of eyes on them from the town perspective. And so sort of in in our development of this, creating the system of if Rita is you know the, the person who is taken on responsibility, she has a set you know, person she goes to to say, okay, we've got a set of updates, we're ready to launch them. Can you put eyes on them, make sure they kind of match what, you know, what we believe we've done to meet the policy. So sort of having that, that backup from the town side. So it's not taking a ton of town time, but is still at least getting a direct look at them before they go live. Um, so just, I don't know if that had been, I didn't see anything like that in the policy, because the policy was more the overarching what to do or not to do and not so much the internal system. It's true. There is, I mean, I think that touched on it, but frankly, I don't want to be that person. I mean, that's, I don't have time for that. If, if the, if the website, if all of a sudden the energy committee and the conservation committee and the, and the equity inclusion, everybody wants to do updates. I don't have time to siphon through all that. And so basically uh, I don't have the policy in front of me, but, Part of it was saying, basically was saying, if you are the administrator for that website, it's your responsibility to make sure that, you know, it's monitored, that updates are appropriate, that, you know what I mean? It kind of put the onus back on the person, whoever that person is. While I totally get what you're saying, Lindley, my concern is that, you know, every, but every time somebody updates something, um, I, I just don't have the time to look at everybody's updates and, and really nobody in the office does. And that's why we were trying to use in the policy to put the onus back on if the select board is going to give permission for any group to have a Facebook page or a website, then it should be their responsibility to make sure it's appropriate. It's, you know, all those things. So in a perfect world, sure, we could lay eyes on everything, but it, it concerns me that, that, I'm not going to have the time or I'm going to get bogged down by, you know, approving everybody's updates. So it's one of those things, you know what I mean, Lindley? It's like, I totally get what you're saying, but on the other hand, I don't have the time. And hence why we're trying to, I, in my mind, we're delegating that responsibility in the policy because, you know, if they're a town committee, we were like, if one of them, anybody said anything, you know, um, on a committee, as public officials, there's, you know, we pay insurance for that. But um, so that's why I think that the select board needs to be very clear and very thoughtful on do they want to allow non-town employees to manage, you know, websites or Facebook pages. So, and I'm not saying you're wrong. You know what I mean, Lindley? I hope you get that. I'm just, I'm concerned about how we're going to no, do I it. <laughs> I think the, the piece of it that was coming up for me was you you saying the town is 100% liable. So even if you ask somebody to be the administrator, they're not they're assuming some liability. But actually, at the end of the day, it really still comes down to the town. So that's what was it, it does. In my yeah. It does, and we pay public official liability insurance. It's part of our premium. And yeah, so if somebody's on a committee and um, does something, and you know with we get sued, obviously, usually the people sue a town and the person because the town has deeper pockets, right? And so the town, supposedly. And uh, so in the end, it would the liability would come to the town. Um, you know, most likely in a lawsuit, we would work to get the person to drop any charges against the person and the town would take on the whole, you know, liability. In, in the meantime, I think, you know, I mean, we're talking about, I mean, we're in the middle of, you know, 
getting this policy together that we can roll out so everybody's going to have the same set of guidelines, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have some active websites or Facebook pages currently. Right. So, I mean, I think at this point, we either have to do, in my opinion, is we have to do one of two things. Either either allow, allow the um, Equity and Inclusion Committee to start to move forward th with their page or take all the other town pages down because I I guess it's not you know wouldn't be fair either way to allow the ones that are standing and say to one committee that you can't have one it, not that we're singling out one committee it's just you know you get a new committee that wants to put one on we have three or four of them so either we take them all off or or we allow this committee to maybe you know dip their toes into the water and at least get their page and build some you know um, start building some substance um, to their page. You know, maybe it's a very bland page, but at least you get going or something. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, what's what's the board's thoughts on that? I think we need to uh, we need to get another draft, at least one more draft, if not the final draft, before we go any farther. If we have to if we have to shut down some others, uh, I'm sorry, but if we're going to do this policy, I think don't I don't believe we can go forward without this policy being in place. Even if it means we have to back up. What do you think, Lindley? And I'm, I'm torn because I think that um, we're, we're in this moment where we've been really pushing to get people involved and stepping up and being part of committees. And actually one of the best ways right. to do that is have accessible information. And Rita's point about mm -hmm. the inaccessibility of information right now that's coming out of our town is a valid one and it, it's a reality it's a reality we everything everyone on this call probably knows that we don't have the resources to make a, a better more robust more dynamic website what we have is what we have because that's what we can afford at the moment given both resources financial resources and people power but i just think you're you're almost limiting the exact thing we've been working hard to kind of get people involved with so i, I hesitate to just cut it off until we've figured it out. I think maybe going for like what you were saying, Chris, of a, a much more limited and pulled back version, um, you know, like a, a great example is like not allowing comments on Facebook. Right. Done. Nobody can break that law because now that isn't an option for anybody. You can't have a discourse because it's not an option. So I think there's a middle ground here and I, I hate to see us sort of just say, no one gets anything until we've figured out and gotten our ducks in a row because then <clears throat> we're actually hurting everybody in the longer run. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is tricky. I don't want to just dive forward and have the town be liable for something right. unknowingly and unintentionally. Well, I would for imagine the, how long, the, Rita, will it take to design the website anyways? I mean, for what you guys want to do. Yeah, I mean, it'll be several weeks before we get anything fully dialed in. I mean, we could put together something very rough a lot faster than that but also like we want to make sure um we have the information we want on there and um and again you know in reading through the guidelines as they are we can at least like use that as a as somewhat of a of a framework i think the difference between setting up an independent website versus the facebook page is that there isn't that space for like the the public comment and dialogue and like the, the off off the you know off the cuff like conversations like I guess we're picturing this more as yeah as very like thoughtful and consolidated like information about what we are doing who we are what we would like to do what you know we have planned um and it does feel um like it would be less much less editing than than maybe a Facebook page and, and just kind of looking through Rita's email on what they were you know trying to do with their page here. I mean, I, I guess I, you know, just jumping on what Lindley was saying, you know, if we were to allow them to at least get started, right? Um, I mean, I can't see why they couldn't put, you know, currently what they're working on, what their schedule or committee uh, meeting dates and times and places like that are. Um, I can't see, you know, any reason why they couldn't put, you know, committee members and contact information for their committee members uh, maybe even the bio piece of it can't see any issues with that. I'll probably have to, you know, when it comes to like 
again, donations, I think we have to stay away from that. Um, or advertisers, um, we still got to figure that thing out. My guess is it probably won't happen officially um, just because of all the uh, red tape we have to go through for that. Um, and, also, too, you may, people may not want to do it because they already pay property taxes. So some businesses may not want to contribute right. because they pay taxes, but we can certainly look at that. And I'm all for them putting out the information. It could be your minutes, your agenda, you know, all that sort of stuff goes out there along with. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking I can't see why they couldn't get started with, um, you know, you know, their committee and when they meet and, you know, agenda items come up for the next one or meeting minutes from the last one committee members, contacts, you know, that kind of stuff. I think we just have to pump the brakes on on what other resources might be on that page um, because we're still ironing that out. Um, and then I, uh, the vision, have we seen a vision statement from the committee, Therese, officially? We approved a mission statement when they okay. first formed. So yes, their mission. So that, that could go on the page. Um, and I apologize, I'll have to relook at that. I, I remember them bringing us, a statement. I didn't know if it was the official, but uh, yeah, they, they but. did. And then I worked with Jesse Plotsky, and we gotcha. kind of slimmed it down a little bit. And so it was adopted <clears throat> by the select board when you formed the committee. So, yeah. so um, I wouldn't see there would be any issue with putting that on there to start. Um, I mean, th I mean, again, that's just my opinion. Um, I mean, we do have five total board members. So, well, if I could jump in for a second, um, the, the part that I'm getting not hung up on, but one of our responsibilities as select board members is to protect the town and to protect the interests of the taxpayers of the town. And I'm, I think we really need to get into a lot more detail about assigning that responsibility to somebody who's overseeing a website, who is probably very well qualified to do that but by even by accident, or we've seen it happen recently where comments, you know, you make a comment and you, it's, it has an, a, a certain intention, but it gets taken, you know, in a different way by somebody. So I really have a difficult, having difficulty assigning our responsibility to, the, to that part of the town to try to quickly put together something to get information out to the to the public. I think we really have to have a strong structure if we're going to do this uh, of how that liability gets assigned. Well, um, not that I, I actually agree with you about assigning somebody to be responsible. My counter question to you is how if they're just doing a website and it's like Chris was saying, information only, it would be the same thing that would be published in town report about who are the members and um, when they meet and their meeting minutes, how is that? Because there's no there's no opportunity for comment on a website. So I'm I guess I'm just wondering, like clarifying, does that still cross that line for you if it's purely informational and it would be the same thing that would be public information in any other written venue? Well, I think part of the intention of the, on on their website, if I read it, if you can, if I heard you right, is that there could be. Um, an email set up, there would be an, a way to be actively communicating with the website, with the inclusion committee via the website. Um, so I think there's a potential there, unless there's no way for any input to come back into that site, that would limit the potential liability. If somebody was you know, offended or something happened, they would then have to go they'd have to get a hold of Therese or somebody at the town office or whatever to pursue that as opposed to starting a dialogue that may turn into something that, that nobody intended it to turn into. Yeah, with the, um, right, what we had in mind for an opportunity for feedback is also a way for us to, you know, in to be able to open up to the town. Like what do people, what do people need? Like where do you not see, um, equity or like, where do you not feel included? And where, where do you think we could be more diverse? And uh, just a way to get feedback. We are also talking about other ways of trying to set out surveys. So, you know, that, that part of the website obviously isn't, isn't set up right now. And I do see, I, I hear your concerns about how all of that information would then be public or would, would all of the emails then, if, if we had an email through the website, all of that would need to be posted publicly somewhere? Is that? 
Yeah, you don't have to keep track of all of it. And that's part of the social media policy. And, and like I said, I don't have it in front of me. But, you know, if you were going to put out a survey on like SurveyMonkey and you had a link to it, then that's fine because the data is being compiled somewhere else and you would probably be just sent something and, and you'd publish that data. You could also put a survey out, um, you know, when we can meet in public at town meeting. And so there are certain ways. Um, I think that a website in a way is almost <laughs> better than a Facebook page because the website is static. So the information you put out is very one-sided. I think what we're going to have is contact information for the town on every website. That way, if there's um, something on your page that they don't like, they reach out to us, not necessarily directly to you. Just like our current website lists, you know, the members of all the committees and it lists the contact information for the select board. And um, so I feel like there's probably a way to to certainly do it um, for you to have a, a more of a static, you know, website. And then, um, you know, we'll work out all these things about, you know, surveys, because we're not the only, you know, the planning commission will do a survey at some point. Um, the energy committee might do a survey. So again, it would have to be, um, we'd have, we're just gonna have to sort it all, it all out. I mean, technology is great um, un until it's not. So I think that if we, I will send out an email tomorrow to all the other people that I know of that have Facebook pages. If I haven't already, I have to go back and look, say no more, you know, do not allow comments on your Facebook page. And then we'll get the social media policy worked out. If you guys start on your website, um, I know for a fact it's going to have like a terms of use. That's one thing so that everybody knows anyone who signs onto your website, our website, or anybody's Facebook page, these are the rules that govern that site. Here's the contact information. So if something's wrong with your site, maybe that's also helps where Paul's right. I mean, that way, instead of reaching out to you guys, I'm aware of what's going on because that contact is the town. So um, I think we just need to get through the policy and come up with some criteria. So everybody who has a social media account is using the exact same criteria. And, um, you know, we go from there. <clears throat> I mean, do you think, um, I was just kind of writing some stuff down. Do you think that we could just, you know, allow them to start start a page? And, and I think there's a little confusion here because I think what they're looking at trying to do is they want to create a web page, not a Facebook page. So right. it sounds like the information is going to be going one way, not two ways. Right. So they're going to be posting their information. Granted, it will probably have a contact. It could be the town manager. Um if someone has questions, but it's not going to be anything where someone's going to be able to post something to the page that other people are going to see and, you know, 50 other people are going to comment type thing. So it's, it's an informational page. Um, I mean, I guess I was just, again, writing down, I can't see, you know, I guess I would be in favor, um, allow them to start, get their page started, you know, put their approved visioning statement in that was approved by the select board. Um, you know, their committee members, um, I, you know, you could probably go as far as, you know, the committee assignment, she had some subgroups in there, what those subgroups might be for, um, the, um, you know, the committee schedule when you meet, um, agendas, meeting minutes, and then the contact could just be, you know, could be you for now, Teresa, to, you know, or the town manager's office email, right. um, to start. And at least it gets their page. It's going, and then once the policy comes out, then either they can add more to it or or not, you know. Um, because I again, I'm just kind of looking at it. It's, you know, it's just not. It's not fair to not allow one committee not to have one while there are other ones out there, regardless of how they got made or approved or whatever. Mm -hmm. But to Lindley's point, you know, we, we do have some very. Um, important information on all of our committees that needs to be out there for people to see um, and to shut them down temporarily for a month or two while we do this policy, you know, just kind of maybe detrimental at this point. So the other thing to consider too, is the fact that while um, yes, she's, you know, like you said, it's a website and it goes one way. If they were going to put out any information, a survey, 
um, or have an event, they have to get select board approval anyways. So there mm -hmm. is the kind of a process for anything, you know, she could, they can't put out a survey or hold an event until they have select board permission. So you would have already vetted the event and right. the um, survey, you know, I'm thinking about just now. So I, I'm, I'm fine with it personally. And, and um, like I said, I, I, the 24th is the big day. Hopefully everybody gets it in and then we'll, we'll work out some, the, some criteria. And, and you're right. I think in many ways a website is safer because I do not do Facebook. I don't completely understand Facebook, except I think somebody can post something maybe on your wall and you have no control over it. And so you don't, that's alleviated by the website because they're just putting out what they're putting out. Well, I want to clarify. I'm not, I'm not against having a website set up. I just want to make sure that the structure, it's structured in a way that, re, that uh, keeps the town from, you know, getting into liability issues and that there's a, I, I know we need to get the information out there and I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm against websites, but I think we really need to do, uh, dot our I's and cross our T's to make sure that the liability issues are addressed. That's all. I mean, I think everybody's made very valid, you know, points towards the argument of the discussion. It's, um, I mean, I, I guess at this point, I'm good with moving forward, you know, um, with allowing them to start um, their website with the approved information that has been officially approved through the select board, which, which I just went over. Um, and if, you know, if I could get a motion or a second on that, we could move forward with that. Um, if not, we'll. So you're it. saying, Chris, that all the uh, other committees can formulate a website right now? Well, Mo, unfortunately, all the other committees have a website. They have Facebook pages. Or, or they have something, you know. Uh, I, I mean, actually, so the web page, as we were talking about, Mo, is, it is probably the better way to go, anyways. You can, well, you okay. can have better I agree with that. information. Um, but what you know, everybody should have the same opportunity, right? Exactly. What I'm saying, you know, so so everybody, all the committees can form their own web page right now. Sure. Well, I mean, didn't stop them from forming their other pages, <laughs> you know. That doesn't because you make a mistake doesn't mean you keep making a mistake. <laughs> That's right. I would make them up in front of the select board if I was aware of it. I think that they should be approved, you know, certainly by the select board. And as I stated at the beginning, energy, conservation, whoever else, I'm going to ask them to come back in front of the select board um, once we narrow down, get the social media policy hammered out. That way they can, you know, have the same conversation with you. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it's, you know, will be a blanket as part of this social media policy. We should state in there that no one gets anything until they come to the select board. Um, that way um, you are all aware of what's going on. Yeah. Just like anything we've done, you know, in the past, Mo, with, you know, if a committee wants to do uh, an event in town or something like that, you know, they have to come and get permission from the select board. Um, you know, that'd be the same as the web page um, or, or anything else, you know, if they want to. I just don't see it down in writing myself. So what do we, Therese, what do we currently have for committee pages out there and what you're on mute. I tried to read my lips. Not that good at reading lips. <laughs> <laughs> I am aware of the Conservation Commission has a Facebook page. Energy Committee has a Facebook page. Devine Park has a Facebook page that I have no idea who manages. Um, and then, oh, Lisa does. Thank you. And then the town has a website. The town has a Facebook page. The Recreation has a Facebook page. That's all I'm aware of. Obviously, the transfer rec, rec has a Facebook page, you said? Yes, and the transfer station has their own website. That's a website website? Yes, that okay. somebody, they pay somebody to manage. Gotcha. 
I mean, I guess my, my personal opinion is that I would rather see us have official websites than Facebook pages, um, just because you can control the information a lot better that way. Yeah. Uh, the other thing too is, I mean, we could look into it is the fact that right now where we have committees listed on our website, maybe we could link, I mean, I'm sure that we could, people could, we could link people to the page so they could have their own pages that they maintain um, so I think that there's a possibility that we, we could do that as well. So if someone came to the, say, let's just use the recreation committee, um, you know, they could certainly, if we go onto the town's website, click on committees, recreation, they could have their own web page. So they don't do, you know, theirs is pretty static. I think that Dietra uses her Facebook page to let people know when the ice needs to be shoveled and things like that. But again, she doesn't have comments turned on, I don't believe, so it's just a one-way, you know, street. Well, there's still comments on the town, uh, town Facebook page. Yeah, there shouldn't be because I and the Bethel and the Bethel community page too. I'm not the sure Bethel who runs community that. Community page is not us. Oh, okay. So I don't have any say over the Bethel community page and. Um, as far as the town page, I've told Kelly not to allow comments. And I think uh, we had this conversation last week, so. Mm -hmm. But again, we'll draw, you know, everybody's gonna come back in front of the board, I think, just to make sure once we get the policy, everybody's on the same page and everybody understands it. I'm leaning with the direction Chris is saying of allowing a website, but actually doing sort of the inventory of what else is out there and, and asking them maybe to pull back, not stop their pages entirely, but pull back on things like comments and, and whatnot. But I also think like Rita said earlier, it's gonna take them some time to develop their website. And so they could be doing that behind the scenes and not necessarily have it live while we're working on the policy. If, if we give them the go ahead, they can be actively working on developing it while we're actively working on developing the policy and they may actually kind of align in timing on, on launch. So I, I think if we say wait until the policy is done, then we're, we're kind of holding them back even further than just the policy. <coughs> we can't give them a go ahead to do any development work. I'd be in favor of allowing them to, you know, start to put things together and to create a an outline, a skeleton of the website and, and uh, start to, I think as they get into it, they'll find that they'll be much more aware of what can be there and what can't be there. And by the time that comes around, we'll probably have the uh, social media policy pretty much nailed down and um, go from there. I think that sounds good for for me, for, for us, I think that would um, that would be great. Um, we can start there and definitely as the, as the policy gets, gets fine-tuned, work with that. And uh, just, I guess, to clarify for, because like the domain and name like cost a certain amount, it's okay that we pay for that, but we just can't um, promote it as any sort of like donation from any certain business, but it can be a private private funded situation, is okay? Well, I think we're going to have to talk about that because if you're, I think it's going to be tricky for you to accept. I just think that could be a slippery slope is if you're accepting money to host your, your website. Um, I'm just concerned about how people are going to feel about that in the community. You know what, if, if I, I'm just not sure, I think that's going to be something that we need to think about further as far as how we're going to deal with that because if you start taking donations from a group, um, you know, and somebody else is upset by that because you took their money, you know, to promote your website, I'm not really sure. I think it, if we have an idea of how much the domain name and fees are going to be, maybe we can come up with the money out of the town budget or something. Um, I'm just, I think I'm just concerned about that as far as that being a slippery slope about who you're taking money from and. Um, does it make a difference if the businesses are also, uh, or members of the committee also have 
businesses or if it just came from personally. Like for example, um, I read a champion also run a farm in town. So like I have a business and like I can very well pay for um, the website domain personally and or I could say that the business is doing it, but also whatever works better is fine. Um, and I know it's, it's, I'm trying to think about it because we accept donations, right? I mean, they fundraise, the rec committee fundraises for different purposes. So mm -hmm. they go out and they fundraise, whether it's a, you know, bake sale or whatever. Um, and they fundraise when we bought the Billadoo land, the town took private donations to buy that. So, um, but having a committee member, you know, fund the domain costs could be considered a conflict of interest. Um, we could, you could take- Because they are a, a town, you know, a town sponsored committee and there are conflict of interest uh, statutes and things that we have to be aware of too. Yeah, so what we could do is you maybe, um, trying to think about this, maybe we, we have, you know, donations could come to the town for the equity and inclusion committee and they could, and then we use the money to, you know, from there, that way it's kind of a pool of donations, right? It's not just one person, it's several people that are donating money. We've had employees donate money for different causes. Um, so I'm wondering if we could just, ex you know, the town accepts donations and then, you know, when the bill comes in, we pay it with the money that was donated. You know, so I, I think it's, I don't know how much a domain name is a year or, or that sort of thing. I don't know. Do you know, Rita, what we're looking at? Is there any money donated? I actually, sorry. I actually, uh, there's any money. Some, did some research on it and uh, I came up with about uh, $60 a year. That includes the domain yeah. name registration and the um, web hosting. 60, 60? Yep. Oh. Well. So, I mean, at this point, I would, pay that out of the budget. I would just say that we would just, you know, do that through the town funds or, or a, a committee member pays for it and then gets reimbursed by the town or whatever, however that system works and, you know, register the domain name. Um, so, I mean, I guess, again, I'm, you know, it just sounds like to me that the committee's looking to be able to put your information out there on, uh, you know, so others can grab it. Most of our committees right now are using Facebook pages, which we, that's the whole other can of worms that we haven't been to. Uh, not many have web pages, um, but I, you know, I'm good with going, moving forward with them doing a web page uh, based upon the, you know, using the official approved information that's already been, um, been in front of the select board. And, and have the web page funded by the town directly for now, you know, because we still got to iron out the rest of our policies and figure out donations and can you do that and how do we do that? But at least this gets you guys started. Um, so I'm willing to do that. I would, you know, our, <clears throat> our appointment is running over quite a bit. So I want to get us back on target here. Um, so, you know, if, if Unless any of the other board members have anything else they would like to say, Mo was trying to say something a minute ago. Um, if not, we would just take a, a motion to allow that um, motion to start with a a web page um, based off of the the official approved information that's been brought before the select board um, to be funded by the town directly. Um, you know, Do they have to pay for the domain name before you build. The website, because I'm no. So I once I would, you go live, I think. Yeah, I would. I would hold off on the the town spot. You know, the town paying for it right now until we work out hammer that out a little bit more. Other than that, I'm good. So moved. Okay, so been moved by Lindley. Do we have a second? I'll second. Call second it. So all in favor? Uh, Dave Eddy isn't on. Uh, he's back. He's on the bottom there. He's muted. Oh, there he is. Okay. So we have a, we have
We have a motion with a second. Dave or, J or, or Mo, either one of you have an approval on it? Uh, I'm, I'm going to say no. No from Dave. I'm going to have to say no. Okay. I'm going to vote yes on it, so we'll move it. Um, all I would just ask, Rita, is just make sure that through the process that you keep Therese in the loop of, you know, maybe, hey, this is what we have. This is the information we have. Maybe somehow if there's a way of sharing that information with Therese, let her see it so that she can get a second thing of eyes on it before um, we move forward to, you know, the next step of, you know, actually putting it live and going that direction. Yeah, great. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we got a ways to go before it's going to go live. I would, I would put that. It, yeah, it's not going to go live tomorrow. You're going to have it popped up. You know, it's going to be a couple of weeks of getting their page put together. We'll keep working on the social media policy and, you know, hopefully it'll come together kind of at the same time. And then that'll allow the other committees to get in line and, you know, have a web page and maybe transfer from the web page to the Facebook, you know, or whatever. We got to figure that out. But. Rita, can you deliver a message to the Equity and Inclusion Committee? I know that there's some members of the select board that are interested in once you have your education piece hammered out, I know you guys were doing that, that you come to the select board, select board like to see it first and be able to, you know, be the first guinea pigs to check it out and see how it is and what, how we can work it out. And so if you could just let yes. folks know Great. that. Just make it that. Yeah, they'd love to see you first. Okay, yeah, we will do. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, thank you yeah. for coming this evening. You know, I apologize that the discussion was probably a little bit lengthier than we all had envisioned, but it kind of encompasses the, you know, we're going through the policy right now that's going to be an umbrella for everybody. Um, you know, and, and unfortunately in these times that we live in right now, it, you know, all it takes is, you know, a comment or something that just could ruin it for everybody. So we just want to we're all kind of pumping the brakes right now to make sure that we're we're doing everything we should be doing. So, but um, so thank you for coming. If you have any other questions, yeah. feel free to Thanks either everyone. Yourself or the other board members or Therese. So, great, thank you. Thank you. All right, Nicole, you have uh, about a minute and a half. No, <laughs> so. Um, so Nicole's next. Um, we have the Energy Committee. I uh, was going to go over kind of the annual goals and talk about um, some of the information that they've been working on. So, And if you'd read the, your packet, then the information's in there. Nicole prepared a nice uh, statement. It's their vision, mission, and strategy proposal. And um, so she did a nice outline for you here, which is um, very interesting. They were great. Uh, they did a wonderful job working with the town plan and, and were you know, obviously did a beautiful job on that chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so I know that on um, page four, uh, that one of the things that Nicole was hoping to walk away from tonight is what recommendations um, from the Bethel Town Plan in 2020 should we pursue in 2021. So I have a list, um, but um, Nicole, if you want to give them a short version of the overview, they did all read their packet. So they have all the information so you don't have to go through line by line. Great, yeah. Um, so I'm, I was really glad to hear all the social media discussion. You know, when I first started on the Energy Committee in 2018, um, you know, I had no guidelines. I had to find <laughs> open meeting law. I made social media guidelines within the group, um, you know, and I was really looking for the town to be providing. So I'm, I'm glad that we're all getting on the same page. Um, I think the process of approving the websites is a really great idea. So as we kind of think of where we are, we, we've been through one hell of a year. You know, like 2020 was rough. We're still meeting online. I would prefer to be in person with everybody right now. Um, and, you know, we're really at a point where everything's kind of new. We just got a new federal administration. The pendulum has swung back in favor. We rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, you know, on the state level, we have this new Global Warming Solutions Act, um, sh making stricter regulations about climate change solutions. Um, and here in Bethel, we just did our town plan for 2020. So everything's really lining up where we're um, at a beginning. I kind of like this as a beginning. 
Um, and hopefully if the energy committee dwindles down again, they will see in our minutes and in the select board minutes that we had this annual review um, and hopefully it will help people get back on track. Um, so this is really meant to get us all on track, make sure that all the select people here know what we're doing. Um, and Chris is also here and he'll, he'll just kind of go over our general outreach strategies briefly for us, if you're ready, Chris. Sure, sure. And good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for, uh, you know, joining tonight. Uh, but just as far as general out outreach, uh, speaking of social media, we've been posting on that regularly every month. And uh, I believe we have a local high school student, if I'm not mistaken, making those. And not anymore, no. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. She, she made a few um, and it wasn't her thing. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, we're still pursuing that. Um, as far as the in-person events, of course, that's been suspended, you know, due to the uncertainty of COVID. Um, uh, continuously, again, posting on Facebook about the opportunities to join the Energy Committee um, and other volunteer opportunities there. And just trying to look over this quickly, sorry. Um, I mean, I, frankly, again, some of these things are pending at this point, and a lot of it is due to, again, COVID and the uncertainty there. We hope to do the participate in the Bethel Ford Festival. Um, hopefully the National Drive Electric Week will occur and we can uh, pursue opportunities there for outreach. Um, did I miss anything, Nicole? It's a pretty light year for outreach. Um, most of the in-person events were canceled. We are hoping towards the end of the year to be um, teaming up with the Ford Festival Committee and bringing National Drive Electric, Electric Week back in some form. I would honestly love to utilize the parking lot I would love to fill up the entire municipal parking lot with nonprofit agencies related to all energy committee stuff. Um, and when that gets closer, we can see if that's actually a possibility, um, kind of thinking in terms of parking, what else is going on with the Ford Festival. Um, but if, if it's possible, if the COVID stuff has eased, would love to make that big. Um, and you know, bringing the electric vehicle outreach kind of in as a separate thing. Um, it's kind of its own. And I, we have been using Facebook a lot, um, especially this year we have some meetings. It's just, we just meet and approve our Facebook posts. <laughs> um, and we try to do a balance right now. So it's like, if there's six Facebook posts, four of them would be um, like efficiency Vermont or fuel assistance. And then two of them, are going to be electric vehicle information. Um, usually I can pull something from Drive Electric's website and tag them. Um, and, and that may change seeing how these social media things uh, play out. But we try to do have a balance where we are getting EV stuff out there. Um, and that kind of brings us to the Mobile Home Energy Savings Program, which is happening now, right now. <laughs> um, this is hosted, sponsored by Vital Communities. And they did this for like kind of two reasons. One of them is that there are so many statewide and regional weatherization programs. There, there's, I have 15 on a list right now <laughs> and they all do different things. So the purpose of this program is to train like volunteers, um, mostly volunteers from the Energy Committee and um, train them on those programs and then kind of just do like a hotline. It could be by email, by phone. Um, so if someone needs to reach out to us, they can get us. Um, and then the second part of this is in their research, they found this, you know, cor correlation between um, mobile homes and low income families. And they're thinking, how do we focus on connecting resources with this specific group? because um, there's so many groups to connect with. So they just zeroed in here. And so they are doing a survey that is going out specifically to mobile home owners. Um, and we got the list 
I ran over to the town office like way before it closed, pulled them from the grand list manually. I really do think we should digitize <laughs> things at town hall when possible. That's totally a different discussion. Um, so we got the list from the grand list and over these next few weeks, the mobile home owners and renters will receive a survey and vital communities will process the data and then they will give it back to us. So our job is to, you know, one, encourage people to take the survey um, and two, to, you know, volunteer and be that resource. Um, so that is pretty much what that energy savings is about. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Well, I just would like to say I really appreciate how thorough of a job you're doing. I feel like when I first got on the board, we had a meeting with the then energy committee and it was more of the discussion of maybe you'll come more regularly and discuss what you're working on. And I think you've done a great job of really putting it together um, and, and getting us the information about what you're working on. I also really appreciate that you have quite a range of things that you're working on and it's not just aimed at certain levels of the community, but there's, you know, almost any member of our community on any strata socially class-wise um, could find something that would benefit them here and I think that's really a hard task and you've done done well with it so thank you for putting all of that together really thanks yeah I mean it's a big uh, category you know one of the biggest problems is that we have too much coming at us 15 weatherization programs I mean how do I know what to <laughs> you know if vital communities didn't put this together, uh, we would be swimming through it. Um, and it, it really speaks to Vermont that we're trying so hard to do something. <laughs> um, so that, um, yeah, that's what we're doing with that. Um, and you'll also notice at the beginning of this, you have everybody's phone number and email address. Um, and that's, you know, for us to use in our group, that is for the select board to use to contact us. Um, I've sent this document to other energy committee chairs. We share what we're doing. Um, and I think it's just really about being available. Um, and so kind of going on to window dressers, mm -hmm. if no one has any more questions about energy savings. Well, you were still doing weatherization Wednesdays, right? That was the tip that you was going out on Wednesdays. That was in the fall, I think October yeah. through December. And that was through button up Vermont. Yeah, I thought that was great information too, um, that you were doing that. I thought that was a neat way to do it. And um, so I, I liked that. I thought that was interesting. And as far as uh, Board Fest, yes, definitely reach out to Mary Floyd. Um, you know, we've talked about some use of that parking lot for maybe food, but we're not really sure yet. But certainly there's always a place there. I like the idea of inviting um, state programs for outreach during Board Fest. I think that's great. And I think that you, you know, besides Facebook, um, Certainly you put stuff in the town report and, you know, ways to um, keep in mind. We do, as I've said before, offered this to other committees. Um, you know, we put out water bills, sewer bills quarterly. That's about 300 and some odd people. It's not everybody, but, you know, it's something if you ever have some information that you want distributed, you know, let us know and we can, we're always happy to get that out if we can. Yeah, thanks. And I definitely think when we get more into like in-person outreach, we will have more things to, to share. Yeah, and I read about the window dressers program. You'd explained it before and then in here, and I think that's amazing. And I do, the town office definitely would be interested and we could even be a sample, you know what I mean, as a starting place, because trust me, we need it bad there. So I saw that when you were writing about window dressing and it was interesting. I'm, I, oh boy, and I have to give full credit to window dressers, to Casey Hess, um, the, the other member of the energy committee, she wrote all of this text <laughs> um, and I, I can take absolutely no credit for any of the window dressers text. <laughs> um, and I really like what she wrote and I think it's very complete. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think it's great to get it in the town office, um, but it's, it's actually, it's a COVID pending still. Casey is yeah. on the window dressers board. So we're like right in touch, we'll know when it's, when it's ready to go. Excellent. Um, and before we kind of open up the um, energy efficiency thing, 
um, I just wanted to, there's two other kind of tentative outreach ideas. Um, one of them was like a solarization solar Saturday. And, you know, kind of thinking of town-wide events, we don't have a lot right, um, kind of like right around when the farmer's market starts and when it starts to get sunny. Um, so if that were to come together, we would want to use the band show um, and just invite solar installers, invite the whole town. Um, Leo on the energy committee, he, he works at a solar company and they have like a, a solar oven that makes cookies. I mean, that's classic. <laughs> um, and I think if we just call up solar companies and invite everybody equally, and let Bethel residents learn about this on our turf. We're not going to someone's office. They're not coming like to our house with their clipboard. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming into our downtown um, and kind of just breaking down that that barrier. Yeah, I think once uh, COVID releases, we can do that sort of thing. You could just reach out to Kelly and reserve the band show. It's that would be great. It's still open to the public, but you could still, you know, use the show itself. And, um, and we have Scott on the energy committee, Scott Putney. He works at the high school and he's been trying to just kind of make connections. Um, and it's, it's been a hard year for that. So he's, he's still there. He's still reporting back, <laughs> but nothing's really happening. Um, so that's just kind of a tentative. We don't want to let it go, but we're not making any progress. Um, and that kind of brings us to um, another part of what brings us here is in the town plan, there was like 18 policies and recommendations related to the energy committee. Um, and, you know, we want to make sure we're going at a, an appropriate pace. We're all volunteers. So we, um, within the energy committee, we thought that um, creating an energy efficient purchasing policy was something we could start to work on. Um, and Teresa, I heard you say that you had a list of ideas. Um, so we're ready to listen. No, I mean, I have a list of policies that need to be updated. I sent you the current purchasing policy that was adopted in 2018. So certainly read it over and send me any recommendations that you have. Um, I don't have a problem with that. And um, I, I already shared it with you. So yeah, some of the stuff I was looking at, obviously, I think you're you know hampered a little bit due to COVID. But um, I liked, my note was, I think that um, just working on increasing public awareness of energy efficiency and energy conservation would be, I think is something a target for you guys. Um, I'm curious to do some sort of survey, whether it's Survey Monkey or how you're gonna do it, we could chat about it, but I wonder what information people are looking for. You know, you have a lot of opportunities. I think you do a nice job advertising that and certainly during COVID, one of the big things we received information was we were trying to get information, especially to seniors um, and to people in need, how to get, you know, food, how to get, do they qualify for fuel assistance? Do that, you know, and, and certainly when we did that big mailer during COVID, um, it was good information. So I guess for me, I think it would be, you know, is to continue on continuing on basically getting information to residents um, conservation, whether it's water conservation, you know, we could do something about that. If you guys came up with a short thing, we could run it by uh, Tim Mills, the utility director about, you know, water conservation and put that in the water sewer utility bills. Um, as that still ties back to the town plan. Um, but I, I, have, I, I'm, I have something in my head where I'm thinking I may have read something where we're not supposed to talk about water conservation. Um, and I'll have to figure out where I read that. It was some sort of guideline. Um, okay. I'm into water conservation because it, it does save energy. Right. Um, and I can't remember where I saw that guideline. And it may not be necessarily low flow toilets, all that that people know about. It could be little stuff, you know, like don't leave the water running while you brush your teeth, you know, or whatever. Anything that would save people um, for obviously saving money on the water system is basically, you know, electricity to pump, things like that. So conservation does, you know, have some, some benefits there. But um, when, like I said, whether you, you know, I just think you have to continue to try to increase public awareness and let people know where they can find, if they want to, maybe they need to get new storm windows, maybe, you know, people, 
like that as long as you're getting that information out there and certainly working with Lisa, you know, through the Herald and, um, you know, getting that information out would be great. Yeah. And when it comes to outreach, I feel like outreach is kind of just like breathing, yeah. you know, it's something we're always doing in the background. Um, and, you know, I've you know done a lot of outreach projects in Bethel over the past few years, and I'm kind of seeing that we really seem to place the climate change burden on just individuals. You know, we're like, you have a low income. Why don't you spend more money? <laughs> you know? And I really think that, um, you know, outreach supports infrastructure and having like bigger infrastructure projects, you know, takes the burden off the little people. Kind of saying like, we all pay taxes, we all put in this pool, you know, how do we give back? And um, some examples, um, Sharon, they have a thermal imaging camera that they bought and they have it at the library. So if someone wants to do a home project, they can use it to see where they're losing heat. Um, over in Brandon, they're thinking of doing a like revolving loan fund so that residents can borrow money from the town for home improvements. Um, and I really like those bigger uh, sort of things, but it's also important to remember that their energy committees are, have been running for longer, you know? So I, I really think this energy purchasing policy is a great start um, building the foundation. And I think that's where, where we're, we're at right now. Yeah. Um, but I do encourage everyone to think big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we do have a revolving loan fund. Um, it's usually right now for businesses, but I'm not sure if back, uh, it was a few years ago, all, a lot of towns were, um, there was a process through the state by which uh, there was a plan so people could do energy efficiencies and then they would pay it back through their taxes, but it got caught up in the legislature and it became a real mess. And I don't think anyone actually ever put it into play. So, um, but certainly um, I know the fire department has a thermal imaging camera uh, for, you know, so when your house is on fire, they can kind of, <laughs> stuff. But, um, but those are all great things to think about, certainly. Yeah, and the more you, we just kind of like learn what other towns next to us are doing, um, it definitely helps see what we can do. Um, and in some ways we are one of those towns. People say to me, hey, I heard you were doing this. And I said, I didn't think anyone cared. <laughs> Um, and kind of also just thinking on a bigger level, like the town plan, we are Act 174 compliant. Um, and as we, the Global Warming Solutions Act Climate Council, they will come out with their recommendations in December. So kind of whatever we're doing to get in shape uh, before then, we might be like avoiding some sort of, I don't know what. <laughs> But um, I think it's just kind of good motivation. And I didn't know if the select board had anything, any like concerns or thoughts or input for the, you know, purchasing policy, kind of what the plan is for the energy committee to just look it over, see if there's something um, we can do. You know, we have Chris and Casey who are law students and cannot provide legal advice but do have some insight um, into what other people are doing. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's just a good start, but I just wanted to hear if anyone has any, you know, concerns or just thoughts or wants to join our meetings while we discuss it. Um, I had a few uh, things I had written down prior. Um, well, one, I think anytime you can, you know, get a second eyes on, you know, if it's a policy in town or, you know, anything that we can be more efficient with is, is, is always great, you know, uh, worst case scenario, we don't do it, you know, but, you know, more often in times when we do have, you know, we do make revisions to policies. That's all we've been doing the last two and a half years, right, Therese, is making that's revisions right. to policies that have been in place since the seventies that didn't make any sense anymore. So, um, uh, so a few things that I just had jotted down, Nicole um, and Chris, um, just thinking out and being on other calls and things is I know the school and the school budget, they plan on doing some renovations or uh, I won't say renovation, some upgrading and some systems at the school. So there might be some opportunities there to partner with the school. Um, I do know that we are in the process of 
you know, moving into the next phase of our new municipal garage. Um, maybe there is an opportunity there for, uh, you know, uh, localized building energy consumption, you know, solar or something that may be able to go a part of that. I know, uh, and Teresa already mentioned it, our town office uh, can always use uh, pretty much everything when it comes to winterizing or <laughs> and it, now that again is another outdated dinosaur that we've been trying to update this year. Um, and then, um, <clears throat> and then the other thing I just had was, you know, I know it's challenging to kind of do the individual homeowners right now because of the COVID, uh, but maybe some of the bigger projects in around town might be the better, you know, bang for your buck. Um, and then the other question I just had on there, and I think you talked about it a little bit was just, I know um, there had been some discussions back um, before you had come on to the board uh, about some partnerships with some of the local um, energy committees. Um, I wouldn't say making it like a regional committee, but just having really close relationships that they could, you know, you could move information from one town to the other. And how, how is that coming? Um, I have a list of energy committee chairs. Um, there's also a, uh, like a master list of Vermont Energy Committee chairs. I think it's Vital Communities who put that out when the pandemic first shut everything down. Um, so I found the chair for Sharon, Ryan Hack. Um, over in Barnard, we have Liz Ferry and Randolph, there's Jennifer Phipps. South Royalton, I don't think has one. And Chelsea Tumbridge, there's just a few people out there um, but, you know, what I've done is compiled that information so that if it can be easily passed on. And I think that's really the, the most important. And yeah, some of us, like this Vital Communities um, Energy Savings, there are three or four towns um, doing this all at once. So like we're sitting in meetings together and we just get to kind of have like our side chatter and stuff. and. It's, I would say it's going pretty good as far as networking with other chairs um, can go at this time. <laughs> if I could jump in, I have a couple ideas. Um, I could either share now or Teresa, I know you mentioned that um, we could send them to you. Um, just ideas, something to think about, nothing, obligations, obviously. Are you thinking um, purchasing policy ideas or just general ideas? Yes, purchasing policy ideas. Um, and then also I was talking to, I believe it was Dan, I cannot remember his last name from Buildings and General Services, just on my own prerogative, just because I knew this meeting was coming up and I had interest in uh, learning more about everything that goes on behind it. And um, he had mentioned something about a new state law, I believe that was enacted recently that was something about a revolving loan fund. And he mentioned um, that there was a potential benefit that could come uh, from that. And I actually set up a call with him for next week, I believe, but at the same time, I'm you know, trying to tread lightly because um, honestly, I don't know how far I can go without um, you know, kind of uh, yeah, talking I with other yeah, if you can get information about the, the loan fund from Dan, just, you know, send it to me, a link, that'd be great. I'd be interested to read it. And as far as your um, comments or, you know, ideas about the purchasing policy, I'd wait to your next energy committee and kind of vet them all through there. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm not, I mean, I'm not looking to rewrite the entire purchasing policy because it's not as old as some of the other ones we're tackling, but certainly some ideas would be lovely. I mean, the town itself, Dave Eddy uh, donated, uh, Dave Eddy, Mo, Paul um, went in and changed, you know, the lights in the town hall and, you know, anything that we've put in, you know, we're trying to update to, you know, LED and, and as we replace things, make them more efficient. And Dave Eddy's done street lights and, you know, all sorts of things. So taking advantage of some of the um, efficiency Vermont prebates and things like that. But any ideas you guys come up with after your meeting would be great. But yeah, if you hear from Dan, um, certainly let me know. I'd be interested in what the um, revolving loan is that he's talking about, whether it's for us to use or for us to, you know, vet applications for people. I'm not sure, but it'd be great to know. Yeah, I will definitely fill you in on that. Thank you. 
Yes. Yeah, and I would I would just say you know always feel free to you know run ideas through Therese on you know just like you were talking about if it's policy or something else. Um, I don't want to volunteer them, but uh, you know Dave has probably more experience than anybody on our board when it comes to um, type of energy. So he might be a good uh, resource to bounce you know information off of from time to time as well. So sounds great. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate everybody, you know, being here and listening. Um, and I do appreciate that, you know, previous discussion about the social media, because it does tie into all the outreach. Um, and just kind of thinking like, you know, municipal garage, town office, um, you know, how do we get involved in those conversations? Like, you know, one way is to read the select board agenda every single time it comes out. Um, but I don't know if maybe we just set up kind of like, you know, person A, on the select board gives a heads up to person B on the committee and says, maybe you should be at this meeting. You know, well, we're gonna talk about it. I'm actually the one doing the RFP right now. So I just barely drafted the RFP. I finished it on Thursday or Friday, sent it to a town member to look at. So once it comes to that, obviously we have to hit all the state energy codes. So there's no doubt that we won't do that. And it's a metal building. Um, so we will have to, to adhere to all the state standards. Um, but whether we're gonna, what we can look at as far as, um, you know, whether we're gonna be able to use any solar right there on that site, I will definitely reach out to you guys and have you take a look <clears throat> because I'm sure you guys could look into, especially with Leo, you know, I'm not even sure that if that's a perfect location for it or not. But my plan was to reach out to you, but it's just early stages right now. Um, Cause like I said, I'm just, I'm just drafting the RFP right now to look for an architect. So, um, but while you were on my list of things, once I get there, I'll reach out to you guys and tell you, you know, and have you look at a couple options for us and see, you know, what we could do. But we're upgrading doors and lighting. And so part of it was already dealing with the energy deficiencies um, that are existing. But maybe we can do solar there. I don't know. And that was my question, going to be my question for you guys to look at. So once yeah, I get there, um, there, there are just a bunch of resources you know, and just um, just having that extra set of eyes being, we can use this resource or, you know, I, I learned this math formula to figure out how to figure out your return on this or, you know, it's something that's actually helpful. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'll let you know when I get there. That was my plan is um, once I had something on board, we'll, you know, we'll have a meeting and we'll be outside of the select board and we'll, we'll um, you know, talk about a little bit and see what we're looking at. Great. Yeah. And it's just kind of, you know, sometimes we all just get so disconnected. It's easy to just kind of be, oh, well, we're busy. So we're just not going to do that step. So we just want to make it known. We are here. We are enthusiastic. We are educated. We are just ready to go. <laughs> that's great. No, I knew you would. So, and I knew you'd help. So that's, that's just um, one of the things that I was working on. So I finally got to that stage. So as we get closer you know i'll let you know and we'll set up a time or i'll just come to an energy committee meeting and we'll talk about it there yes anyone come to an energy committee anytime reach out to us you know just um small town we have a lot of informal communications so just bring it all in <laughs> you know? um and yeah i just really appreciate everyone's time if no one else has any questions we can let you move on to the next item on your agenda i have a comment uh, this is Gene Krauss, Nicole. It might be helpful for the Energy Committee to look at what it would cost. It seems to me, as a layperson, that the, the site where the town garage is, is high enough and open enough to be a good site right. for solar arrays. If there is a possibility of even overdoing a solar installation up there, that re could recover uh, additional energy uh, that could be banked for the town hall and the town offices. Uh, oh, so for sure, the, yeah. My father-in-law yeah. has a trailer. He has solar panels on one side and that powers his trailer and our house and some well, extra. So that's so just the, one little strip. There's yeah, I'm just people. suggesting that the energy committee might want to look at that at, at that possibility, what that might mean for the town. Yeah, that's a great idea. And there is a map. I mean, we, I can look it up in five minutes if that's a good solar site. 
Um, and I can actually forward that map link to you um, tomorrow. Uh, can I email that to everybody? You can actually hang on to it. Don't yet. <laughs> there's, some, there's some issues with that that we'll talk about when I come to an energy committee meeting. So what we're going to be looking for is probably, you know, panels to go on the building itself just because the site is actually pretty full. And there's some issues up there with the existing site itself and then what we're going to do down the road. But um, like I said, I will reach out to you and um, I just need to get a little further out. But definitely um, we want to look at solar options for the town garage. Currently we're part of a net metering. So we are part of a solar array. So the town um, does take advantage of that. So um, we do that with green backer, green maple. And, um, but yeah, definitely we'll look at that um, when I come to this um, energy committee and we'll talk about the town garage and I just need a little more um, information from the architect to kind of let you know what we're what we're looking at so but I have yeah, we man. definitely look forward to opening up this conversation and getting more into it yeah me too it'll be interesting and I think we'll find you know some options there that are hopefully we can you know with enough return that we can take advantage of well, thank you for joining us this evening. I know I apologize that we were running behind, um, which we're still running behind. So <laughs> to Theron and AJ that are patiently waiting for us. Um, but, um, you know, and, and Therese is your go-to person. So any, uh, I mean, you feel free to reach out to the board members at any time, but Therese is great to funnel information through. Um, she could, you know, rather than waste time on certain things, she could tell you yes or no, or yeah, you know, Type, you know, and then she'll bring it before us um, to look at it thoroughly. So, yeah, Thank definitely, you all so much. we definitely appreciate the, um, just how responsive, Therese, that you have been, and just how like motivated you have been to get through the town plan and all of that. Um, that that energy kind of has been missing, so we appreciate it one hundred percent. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I appreciate you and Chris coming on and, and volunteering and doing such a good job. So yeah, once I get a little more information, I'll, I can provide you with some information about what we're going to build, what we think, you know, because we obviously have a very strict plan and very limited money. And so, um, but I'll send that to you so you guys can get an idea of what we're, you know, looking at and have to balance amongst yourself, especially with Leo and all you guys, you might have some ideas that we haven't considered yet. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Chris. And we will be moving over to Theron. Uh, Theron's got, um, well, Conservation's got uh, requests here for some uh, potential timber harvesting in Quimby Forest. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Thank you. And Good then, evening. And then AJ is the county forester. Uh, apologize for AJ. He's been uh, patiently waiting for us. We're about a half an hour uh, over agenda right now, but uh, thank you for waiting. Yeah, no problem. So I just want to say I read this and um, all of it. It was so interesting. And I really appreciate all the work that you guys have done about this. Um, I'm not sure how you want to do this, Farron, if you just want to kind of go over it, you want to answer, you know, I have a list of questions and things. I right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll just start out here with an intro and uh, hand it over to AJ a little bit. He has a bunch of information for you. And then I have a list of uh, logistics that I've thought of already that might answer some of your questions right away. And then uh, I was going to, you know, field some questions and, you know, so AJ, I'm sure could answer some questions as well. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Farron Griffin. I'm co-chair of the Conservation Commission. And um, yes, we are talking about a timber harvest in the Quimby Town Forest, which is located at the end of Woodland Road, which is up on Sand Hill Road, just past the town garage. You can also access the forest from Ringe Hill Road in Liliesville and also the Olmstead Road off of Brink Hill Road. Um, A.J. Fallensby, the Windsor County Forester, and he does some of Orange County, I believe, as well. Um, he did a resource assessment for Quimby Town Forest in the summer of 2020, this past summer, 
and when he presented the information to the Conservation Commission, he recommended a timber harvest. And so at this point, I'd like to pass it over to AJ and he can uh, fill you in on that and then I'll go over my logistics. So AJ, thank you for joining us. Yep, yeah, thanks. Thanks everybody. Excited to share uh, what I learned about Quimby. Uh, my computer's having technical difficulties so the video's not working. I, I do have a PowerPoint that I can attempt to share here. Not, not starting off on a good foot here with the camera, but I could try this and, and see how it goes. Is it the one that you created that um, Farron sent to us? Yes. All right. yep. I, I did print it out. So the select board, all of them have a copy of it. So if you, okay. if you struggle, don't worry about it. Everybody has right. a copy. If all else fails here, we'll see. <laughs> oh, I guess I can't share my screen. So screen sharing. That might be something you have to give him access to, Therese, as the host. Right. Or you could present it and... AJ could uh, I don't, I don't have it. Let me see. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> okay, let me see. Wait, let me see. Share screen. Um, okay, here we go. Well, I just, I, it says that multiple participants can share their screen simultaneously. So. Um, ah, there it works. There it is. Okay. There you go. All right. Let's well. get this. We'll see if this works. There you go. Uh, all right. Can you see the started presentation or? Yep. PowerPoint? Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, as I said, I'm the Windsor in Orange County Forester. I cover the north band of Windsor County towns and I head up the White River up into uh, Randolph and all the way up to Williamstown. Um, I've been County Forester with Forest Parks for five years now. Um, and working with the town of Bethel since 2017 on the various town forests that you guys have. Uh, my role in this, just to explain the county forester's role with town municipal lands is I, I'm a resource for the town um, uh, to help manage these, these, these uh, public lands. Um, and that's in the form of educational stuff, writing plans, uh, periodic timber sales, um, all that is it's in the legislature. It's a uh, it's a directive from the legislature that county foresters are here to help manage these lands, no charge to the town. Um, so that's kind of my role in these how this works here. Um, so uh, Quimby, Quimby, uh, it's located in Lilliesville. Uh, as Farron said, it's located off of Ridge Hill Road and Woodland Road, and also. Um, um, right now, you can't drive a car up there. Um, you can get close to it, uh, but you can't actually drive a car on unless you have a four by four big mud tires. Um, and I'll get to that a little bit later. I think, uh, you almost probably take a note. 160 acres in size, um, and it's entirely forested. Uh, just to give a sense, this is, um, I added this slide today, but this is, uh, these are the four, the three town forests and where they're located. Um, in the town, um, and we're talking about Quimby, and it's like I said, in Louisville. There's also Camp Brook, and that's off Camp Brook Road. Um, that's 220 acres. I wrote a plan for that in 2019. And then um, and then there's Branley Air, which is located in, uh, I wrote a plan for that in 2018. Both Branley Air and Camp, Camp Brook. Camp Brook has some legal access. There's some access issues there that need to get sorted out. Brandley Air, if you've ever been up there, it's really steep. Um, it's you, you, nothing, it's it's great for white hiking, walking. There's some vista improvements um, that have been done, but really nothing can be done commercially um, uh, for forestry, um, for logging or anything like that. And there's no reason to anyways out there, but, um, but Quimby, it's got legal access uh, right away, right to it. Um, and based on my assessment, there's the potential to do some timber sale and so uh, a timber sale out there and some logging. Um, so that's kind of why we're focusing on Quimby. Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, but um, for some reason we can't see anything other than just the introductory slide. Ah. There we go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So I did one of these and I, I went through the whole PowerPoint someone at the end was like, you know, we didn't see any of those. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so thanks. 
go back just to show you. Um, uh, this is the map I was, this is kind of gives you an idea of where these temples. So brief history, I, I have a pretty thorough records um, for a lot of town forests in Windsor County. Maybe he's one of them. Um, and it goes back pretty far. We, we've had a, um, in the 50s and 60s, there, uh, up into the 70s, FBR had a, um, a municipal forester and their job was to manage uh, town forests throughout the state. They kept really good records. So I have good records until about the 80s for most town forests. Um, so what I could, find with some digging online and through my records is that the town purchased this in 1934. It was designated as a town forest in 1957. Um, um, and at the town, at the time when it, the town purchased it, there was an old, there's a home site there with a 12 acre field. Um, and since then it's been um, growing into forest and maturing. The field was abandoned. Um, some, uh, some of it uh, regenerated naturally and some parts of it were planted over the years. Um, I do have it. There's an interesting thing, and whoever read it, uh, who's read the plan, saw the bit about um, the logging in the 60s. There's quite a bit of the logging in the 60s on uh, Camp Brook and in Quimby. And in 1967, the town of Bethel uh, got a certificate for of good forest, uh, good forestry on municipal forests um, for the management of the three forests, which is kind of neat, I thought. Um, and that was the last time anything was done until the 1990s on Quimby. Um, and it was the last time anything was done at Camp Brook too. I know this is about Quimby, but um, Camp Brook hasn't been harvested since the 60s either. Um, but in 1996, state, land, uh, state Lands Forester with Forest Parks and Recreation, Rick White, um, had a, a, a timber sale at um, Quimby. And that was the last time it's been harvested. So it's been 25 years since anything work has been actively done at Quimby. Um, so uh, that's the cool thing about the records I have. I have old aerial photos of, of the area. So this is, I have photos dating back to 1939. Uh, this is Quimby in 1939, here's the, uh, here's the, uh, the white on the screen is the field um, for the most later areas uh, are field white. And as they progress, you get the grays or the hardwoods and then you get your softwoods. For that field is the intersection of the roads is where the house site in is and there was a barn there. Um, and as we progress here, um, next photo I have is from the 60s, a little smaller, but you can see the, um, the field now has got trees in it. They've got plantations. Uh, the plantation you can see here, um, I don't know if you can see my, my pointer, um, that was planted and it's still here. It's a white pine plantation. It's on the, on the east side of Woodland Road and that's still around. Most of the other plantations were liquidated um, through various harvests, uh, harvests um, in the future here. So um, pretty cool. It's a really neat, neat stand of white pine out there. Um, throughout, you walk around uh, any parts of Quimby, there's signs of the past land use. Uh, there's a really cool house foundation. That's in the lower right corner here. Um, that's the, the house foundation. Um, and across the road is the barn foundation. And that's the picture up in the lower, uh, up right, lower, lower left. Um, is the house upper right's the, the barn. It's like the only field there is it's like a tenth of an acre is an open. The rest of it's um, the rest of it's come back to forest. There's there's stone walls throughout. Um, there's really really cool piles of stone from when they cleared that um, that field back um, when they first settled that with the land out there where the twelve acre field is. There's you know a number of big old piles of, of stone which are cool. And then in the and, and the, the softwood there is the um, kind of results of Rick White's harvest in the, in the 25 years ago regenerated in some um, softwood um, regeneration. So uh, kind of what, kind of a brief history of the land use um, out at Quimby. Uh, so this is what it looks like now. I, I, I like maps, so there's a lot of maps here. Uh, Kind of give you a sense of the tree cover now. So uh, the darker greens here, conifer cover, co uh, cover um, and the browns are, um, it's leaf off. So th that's hardwoods that are out there. So it's mostly hardwoods. There are some mixed wood stands, but the majority of the forest is um, hardwood cover, mostly sugar maple ash, um, peach and red maple. That uh, pine plantation, like I said, is still there. That's in the lower, uh, that's in the Southeast corner of Quimby. 
it's nine acres in size. Uh, so let's see. So this spring I went out there, we did, a, I did an inventory uh, the month of May. It was a really nice time to be out there. A lot of spring ephemerals were out. Um, and so I, I split the stand. So the way I went about this is I split the sand, uh, the forest up into eight different stands and a stand is, is just a group of trees with uh, characteristics are, that are similar. Um, so based on my assessment, there's, there's, there's eight different forest types out there. Um, and so based on that in the, and measuring. So when I went out there, I, I did uh, point sampling. So I measured tree density, size, um, height, um, a basic forest inventory out there for each stand. Um, and then I developed this plan. Okay, let's see. Um, uh, let's, sorry, I'm a little gonna click here and turn the page over here. <laughs> um, so there are some issues out there. Um, this is what the roads look like. So, um, the Woodland and um, Ridge Hill Road. Um, Woodland Road is the puddle my dog's running through there. That's, you're not on, quite on town land. That's just beyond the puddle in the, in the, um, in the background of that picture is town, uh, is where Quimby starts on Woodland Road. Um, and this is the second of two large puddles you have to get through. Um, the, the middle picture here is further up on Woodland Road. It's a huge dugway, lots of rocks. Perfect for UTVs uh, to go through a bunch of uh, uh, up there. So, um, Ridge Hill, really deep dugway now, um, and which makes it hard to get the water off the road. So it's wet most of the time. Um, so that's the biggest issue. Logging wise, not a big deal, really. We can we can work with that. Winter time logging, we can get in there with trucks have this open for the public, there's going to have to be some um, improvements done to the road to get to Quimby. Um, I've got uh, an idea of the best way to access Quimby. So this is the southern part of Quimby, and this is Ridge Hill Road, the black line here. The X on this map is where the town maintains to now. Um, and the white line there is the town line, that red line, and then the, the kind of grayish with the dots, that's, that's the boundary. And there's a the, the road's okay until you get to where the, the stream is on this on this road uh, uh, here. It's kind of washed out above that, and it's not. I, I don't have an exact measurement. Something I can I can I can get to how far we need to get up to onto Quimby and then off to where I have circled here. I think we can put a, a parking lot there. It doesn't have to be large uh, enough to get a couple cars parked so you can enjoy and, and hike around out there. Um, my thought is maybe we do a timber sale, that's where the landing would go. We then convert the landing to a parking lot, potentially. Uh, so the landing, um, so I, I obviously I'm looking at the same map. So mm -hmm. we do not maintain ringe in the winter. We don't plow it. Um, mm -hmm. We deal with it in the summer. Obviously after the April 2019 flood, we did just the class three portion of it because FEMA won't pay for class four road repair. So we didn't do the top of it, but where you have the red circle, is that mm -hmm. where you're thinking the parking lot would be? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's still a dugway there, um, yeah. for a little bit, but it's not far to get off into the, into the West there, up West of the road. So just on the property, put a landing there, a small parking area. Um, it's, and, and the road's not bad from where it's not maintained. It's pretty flat. It's where it starts to climb. Um, once it gets to Quimby is where it's washed out. And if we had the logger repair it, I mean, we would just, if we're going to have them do something, obviously they'd create a landing. So, mm -hmm. but if we were going to have them repair that section of the road, couldn't we just take that out of the timber sales? Yes. Yeah. That's what I would recommend. Um, we would, so the way it would work, I would mark the timber sale, get an estimate to get bids. Um, however, we'd want to sell the sale and we would deduct, I'd get the logger to give us a price to fix that landing, fix the road and give us a price and deduct it from the stumpage. So that's what I was just going to say. I had mentioned to Farron that if the select board went ahead with this, that we would have to do an RFP and he thought maybe you could help with that. And um, that's what I assumed is we were going to be, we would just bid it on stumpage, right? Yep. Yeah, and I do that with a bunch of towns. I've, I've done timber sales. Yeah. Any idea with the current mill prices and what you plan on harvesting, what that would 
what's it what is it what are mills taking right now uh they'll take just about everything but pine pulp um pine pulp is um really hard to sell it's been hard to sell for a while now we've lost some paper mills in maine which has affected yeah our wood economy but the good good thing here at quimby there's not a lot of softwood pulp it's there's a really nice pine stand that is mostly saw logs that we would thin um the hardwoods are actually really nice uh, so sugar maple ash always pretty valuable so um it's been well managed throughout the years it's just it's been a while so the density is pretty high yep. um, so it would be there'd be some saw logs it would it would be uh, uh income you know it, it would gain it would get income it would be something the town would have to pay for or break even by any means. right i was curious i know it's kind of at times right the market can be a little bit fickle as far as what you know what people are paying for when so sure um, you know I, I understand that it makes sense yep yeah um just like uh i sold just to reference uh, <laughs> uh at crawford town forest and royalton we sold a pine job there and that was really heavy to pine pulp and that's still it puts thousand dollars in the positive range for the town so it was what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that part. Six thousand yep. um, dollars okay. for a pretty crummy pine stand. So, uh, yep. it, it, the quality of Quimby is way better. Um, so I, I I don't know. Depends on how much we do this first round. Um, right. But so my, also, so basically, you would use that same landing for all eight stands. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Um, it's the only. I, I would rather come from Woodland just for access for. The town, like it's easier to get to the village. Uh, yeah. We're gonna have, but it's just so wet. There's actually like I'm pretty sure if you had a wetland person, uh, it's not on the property. It's on the neighbor's property. They classify it as a wetland, and it's a road zone issue there. So I don't really want to deal with that. Yeah. But I think it all could go this way. I'm not that far of a skid for the landing. All right, and then just out of curiosity, so you oversee the operation. Obviously, you go out and mark the trees. You walk it with the logger and then whoever you know gets the rfp awarded to them i'm assuming you work with them and then when we get mill slips and stumpage are you looking at all that to make sure yeah. to buy out okay yeah yeah i would uh i'd oversee the whole thing make sure the town's getting what they're supposed to be getting um check the mill slips and all that i can send um some sample contracts and um kind of the uh, agreement between the town and, and myself that i've used before Okay, yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah, I was because I was reading that about, or obviously doing reading your proposal here for all the different stands. It was interesting, and I'm assuming that you remove some of the infected trees that you talk about as you're going through and you made your recommendations for each, you know, stand and how it should be managed. Um, I'm assuming that's when you also clean up some of the maybe besides taking the good harvestable material are you also cleaning up some of the stuff that you think is infected that's my question yeah 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 so definitely wouldn't just take all the saw logs or anything like yeah. that It'd be a mix of poor quality um and hopefully you have more poor quality wood marks you know it's always want to be improving it um so like beech bark disease i talk about ash a lot um i'm just going to skip ahead here um just to look at this this is kind of my proposal, my list. I, I realized I was looking at this tonight and I had some errors in there. That's what's in red. I changed that to what I sent. I don't know what happened. <laughs> my years were different in the plan than from this uh, summary. So I, I just made it match what I say in the plan to this. So that's why it's a little, it's a little different. Uh, I, I'm proposing Stan, and it really, we could we could pick how, many, how much we want to do and, and where we want to do it. But I, I, I would think one should be part of it um, and potentially three. Um, and the reason for that is the high amount of ash in both of those stands. Um, stand one has 14% of its basal air, so its density is made up of white ash. Um, and stand three has 15% of its basal air made up of white ash. And um, I hope you all know about emerald ash borer and the threat that poses to our ash. So right. That's an introduced pest that's, that's kind of decimating and killing all our white ash. And it's found in Vermont, not found in Bethel, but it's, you know, it's close. So to lessen the impact on those stands, we would reduce the, the percent of ash there, grab the valuable trees and try to regenerate them. So the, the harvest I, I describe in there would be an attempt to promote um, 
young ash in the future. So try to get some trees to be regenerated in the future because that's kind of our hope for our ash. So it wouldn't be to just completely take out all the ash. It's to keep some, harvest what's valuable and set it up for the future. Um, so that's why I have one in three would be up on my list for, for stands to target first. And, and so in looking at that, if we're in one and three, we might as well do two and seven um, just because they're on that side of the road. And then I'm thinking you do um, four, five, and six later. Um, the composition there is not as heavy to ash. Um, it's not as um, the densities aren't as high there. Uh, maybe you do that later in a couple of years after things get established. So that, that was kind of my proposal. Um, I, think I, had, I have uh, a range for uh, three and seven. They're not high on the, you know, you could do them. You could do them now. I mean, I should be two and seven, but anyways, um, I think one and three would be the ones to go for. And, and if we're there, we might as well do seven and three or seven and two. So, and then later you do four, five, six, and eight. Yeah, uh, yeah, four, five, six, and the thing with the eight is, I think that's uh, that's an area that's just no logging, and, and that's something I want to mention. Not every part of Quimby is, um, you know, conducive to logging. So eight is very steep. Um, it's a hemlock stand, yeah. very rocky. Um, I think that's a place we just leave alone. I actually think that south uh, eastern corner is it's wet where it's not uh, softwoods. It's just an area we just leave alone. Let let be, um, let it you know, manage itself. So, um, yeah, four, five, and six would be next. Yeah, you were talking about a tree release, right? Um, mm -hmm. On eight, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, uh, yes. Um, with eight, there, I, there's potential to do, so it'd be more habitat driven there. Um, it's good deer cover. There's some oak mixed in there. So my thought with the, the release would be volunteers, um, game of logging classes, uh, Votech, I know, uh, Randolph's got a Votech kind of class. Yep. Some people out there interested in learning how to manage the woods out there, cutting and dropping trees where we won't ever, <laughs> but they can release some red oak. Oh, that's, um, a great, I, that's a great idea. And I think too, game of logging, that would be a great place if you could do it there too. That would be, that's good. I like yep. that idea. Yeah. And, and big thing, goal for me overall, like um, not only is it like, supposed to do it because the, the legislator says I'm supposed to, but I really want to do outreach with these. So um, anything we do, I would promote it. I would invite people from the community out just to check out what we're doing. Um, it'd be hard initially without the parking lot and road, you know, fixed up, but we could hike some people out there, show them what an op out active job looks like, uh, show what a stand's marked, and then just have people interacting with, with logging who, who might not get a chance to do it normally, get school kids involved, um, all sorts of stuff like that. That's really what I'd like to do. Yeah, I think that would be great. And and certainly Lindley, as a select board member, she is a teacher and she teaches um, uh, wood shop. So she, Lindley, you could tell the kids this is where I, this is where that I come be. from. Start them at the base, Lindley. <laughs> oh, I. That's exactly where my class starts because I'm a hardwood nerd. And yeah, the, I, they get to learn all about where it comes from and how we harvest it and it would be great to have an active logging site that we could go out and actually see how it's done and and speak with you about it that'd be really cool yeah it would be that'd be awesome and maybe trying to get some wood pure you know some get some wood from the forest to your class would be really cool too oh that'd be nice yeah that would be good i had a couple of questions um yeah i, have a couple. I just wanted to make sure i had it right so it sounds like between the timber harvest and any of the uh, maintenance that needs to be done on the roads or the trails in the area um, and the landing, landing slash parking area that we would come out net positive on the cost of the project. Does that sound right? Uh, uh, yeah, it depends. I'd like to get, I think Farron's uh, thinking too, to get a uh, road former just to look at the road. Like I, I'm not, I don't know what it would do to get the road passable for like people who actually want to go out there and park. So I don't know what the cost would be. Um, but for logging, getting a landing, getting that truck road up and going wouldn't be a big deal. It would it, it would be net positive. But but getting it improved enough to get people out there using it, it might. I don't know. Um, exactly. Yeah, we could take a look. We could have um, Alan, you know, or somebody look at it in the spring. I mean, I don't. Th obviously, it's nothing that we would 
keep open all winter. Um, you and I have been up there, Chris, but at least we yeah. could, um, you know, at least in the spring and summer, if we had enough for parking so people could access Quimby, if they didn't want to park, you know, somewhere else and walk up, I think it would be good. Yeah. Right. Let them have some access for a few months a year or something. Right. Absolutely. <clears throat> Right. So, so, the logging, so the logging trucks would be going past that that home that's uh, there on Ringe Road. See that home down in the yep. lower center? Yeah. Yep. So the logging trucks would be going back and forth across that road. That home is pretty fairly close to that road. So do we have to do anything as far as the property owners there? Be no, it's good to town road. So we have we can certainly direct, you know log trucks can use it as the town road it's yeah i've been up there and it, well you guys have been up there too it's, it's yeah. basically in their front yard yeah yeah i think as long as you know we'll check out how the road is improved what the road looks like now um in front of their property because we don't go all the way up there now so we could you know just make sure that if they've put any money into the road certainly we wouldn't want to we'd want to leave it in better condition than we found it for sure sure or, or is woodland a better route to pursue he said that woodland has some wetland up there so you really can't access yeah. it very well there it's he, on somebody else's property not ours but yeah. rent at least um it, it would be nice if we could have access there and those homeowners don't live there year round, aren't those? Though they come up just a couple of times in the winter and right, they're not yeah. they're not full time. Right. Yeah, I I actually know those people who live up there on Ringe Hill. They're the Von Osens. Yep. 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 Right, and there's some previous clients of mine. In fact, we we're talking about a project right now, but um, I do know there's a little section of trees between their field and the road. So there is a little buffer um, as far as that goes. And, you know, as far as the access, it certainly is, I think, up in the air. These are kind of, you know, some ideas that we see and we're kind of shooting for. But, you know, there's wet areas on both sides. So, um, yeah, my plan was to get with Alan Patton, the foreman, and bring him up there in the spring when we can and uh, kind of do some more assessing and, um, you know, anyone, including AJ, would be welcome on that trip as well, you know. Um, so those are my two cents as far as that access point. So the, the work, it sounds like from going through that the work would be in late fall or winter of 21. Is that? Yeah, I would say fall. Yeah, fall, yeah. Or, sorry, winter, get them started late fall. Get that yeah, work. okay. Improvements, but they'd be it'd be a winter. It's too wet there to do anything in the summer. And then being we haven't, I think you said on there we hadn't done any timber harvesting since '96 in that particular forest. Is 25 years? Is that the typical timber harvest window? Is it later, early? Um, it's pushing it a little bit. Uh, about 20 years. It depends on the site. It depends on the. Um, extent of the harvest before. So if you do kind of smaller scale. Um, little lighter cuts want to be in there a little more frequently. If you're pushing it out like 20, 25 years, you would be, it would, it would change it a little bit. But I think it, it's definitely time. That pine stand is, is um, starting to close in on itself. There's starting to be mortality of very large, valuable softwoods in there. They're standing dead. So time to thin that again. Um, ash trees are, it's, it's um, pretty mature. So I think um, right. it makes sense to do something. And what do they need from us? Uh, oh, tree spec. What what do they need from us? Do we actually have to make a motion to allow for the timber harvest, or how does that work, Therese? Yeah, you would have to. And basically, we would move forward with an RFP because you obviously have several loggers in the area alone. So you would want to make sure that we had an RFP, and we'd have to have an agreement that I'd sign with um, AJ about you know, managing it. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you would have to, um, to do that. But I have a question, AJ. Um, on page 33, you talk about stand three and you were, I think part of it was a conversation saying there's there are options for how to manage the plantations into the future, either passive, um, yes. you know, and decline naturally or a more active management. And then on page 34 you have your you know plan so are you 
what's your recommendation, a more passive or more active, you know, management? Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I, I would favor a little bit more, um, just cause I think it, that, that's a, those patients, it's the last ones that are out there. It's a, it's a glimpse at the past land use. Mm -hmm. We can keep them going, um, and growing. I, I think we should, if they start to go, particularly that pine stand, stand seven, if that starts to go the other way, Oh, larch too, but I forgot about the larch and stand three. So, the, uh, the larch, sorry, I'm thinking, I was thinking stand seven, the larch and stand three, there's not a lot of it there. Uh, small patches dotted throughout and, um, you know, they're, like I said, that, that gets back to the land use piece there. So we could kind of promote them, keep them on the landscape, um, or we could just take them all now and collect the, the solid value. So those are kind of the options there. Um, or we could kind of let them do, let them stand to um, so being more passive. Sorry, I was thinking stand seven. I forgot okay. about the large plantations. So, so your recommendation is that the select board is use the more passive approach to the large plantations. Yeah, yeah, but that's to keep that historical land use out there. Um, you don't, there's like no large like that is, is not as natural. Um, it, it, if we have larch or tamarack in our forest, it's more in a wetland area. Okay, well, I think it's interesting. So, all right, so I, I think that that's so a more passive approach. Okay, I mean, I think that's, I think the select board would probably do what you recommended. I just was, in, was reading through your presentation and saw that you, you know, had, that was part of the conversation was mm -hmm. you know, what to do there, but I think that's interesting. So, um, I was just curious about, you know, about that, so. Yeah. Well, I don't swear I've never heard of a larch. That's interesting. Tam yeah, uh, European yeah. larch and the tamarack, yeah. Ah, okay. Have you guys, I got the one more slide, and that's where the sex is. This is a view that I found. Uh, someone cleared a little patch here, and you got a view of Kilo to the south, which is really that's neat. Cool. Yeah. Is that the small overlook that... <clears throat> There's been a conversation about this, about the small overlook, if this is it, about sometimes, uh, I think snowmobilers wanted more of an access, but there really wasn't yeah. a good place to turn around. It was a little more dangerous. So I think people were kind of just going up partway, maybe with their ATVs. Mm -hmm. It looked like there's ATV tracks to a point and then people would go out, walk and check this out, like eat their lunch or something. That's, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty surprising. I didn't think that was there, and then suddenly I had a point right where the clearing was, and everyone turned around. And... <laughs> so, just out of curiosity, have you ever done one of these plans, forest management plan for Branlier or Camp Brook? Yep, I have. Um, I've got the Branlier one is not as detailed as this um, because. Uh, it's detailed, uh, it assesses the resources out there. It really doesn't have management, active management, just because it's so tough to do anything there. Uh, more so, I think we, I recommended maybe some vistas. I know uh, Farron and I have gone out and looked at them. You know, what trees need to be cut. Um, there's a cool spot for a picnic area at the top of that um, that I recommended. Uh, for Camp Brook, that, um, there, there's legal, the deed research needs to be done, and probably by a Lawyer, um, someone, you know, surveyor or something to figure out where the legal access is there. Cause there's an old road, it's on maps, but on the ground, there's like three roads. So I don't know which one is which, how, how we get there. Um, so that needs to be resolved for Camp Brook. But that, that has a more detailed plan, it has recommendations. But I think I, in every one, I say we can't do anything until we can gain access here. Is that something that you could send me? Could you send me both of those for Brandlear and Camp Brook? Yep. And I could, just out of curiosity, have you ever spoken to Carl Russell about Camp Brook access? Or, cause I, we have a class four road committee now up and running. I have not, I, I think I did with Brandlear when he was on the select board. That's what I wondered, yeah. Well, yeah. If you send me both Camp Brook and Brand Lear, I can always, um, I can ask the class four road committee to do a little research maybe on the Camp Brook access. Yeah, no, that'd be great. I just, I don't have the time. I, like I looked as much as I could, I did a little deed. I think the conservation commission did some deed research, but it needs a more, it needs like a legal eye, I think. Um, okay. Recommendation for that. 
All right. Well, we'll if you send them, I can take a look and kind of um, either ferret it out, and try to get the class board to take a look at it, and then eventually I could get a legal opinion if I needed to. <clears throat> I'll stop sharing. That's all I had for the point. But I don't see. Great. Thank you, AJ. Um, I'd like to tell you guys about some of the things that the CC has been thinking about Quimby with that, um, you know, out overlook point there and being close to the school, we have a grand plan of connecting the trails behind the school um, up to the Quimby town forest and, you know, making that some type of, uh, you know, just cool loop or run um, or what have you. And um, you know, one of the, the biggest thing here that the CC wants to ask the select board is, you know, we've talked about this, you know, this timber harvest landing and the net positive, and we're hoping um, that the money above the road improvement and the log landing um, making um, go to the CC in our quest to build these trails and everything and boost recreation in Bethel. That's one of our main goals and um, that's what we would love to see. It could be a great help to accomplish these goals and we think be a big boon to the town and to the area. I agree. I think that it would be a great boon. I think that that's something that's going to be a key to Bethel's um, economic development is going to be the trails and I, I'd seen the plan that you guys had done or someone had about connecting the stuff behind the school up. I think it's a great idea. I know that Theron, because um, I attended a conservation commission meeting and we we're talking about it. I know that Theron, um, not Theron, uh, Thatcher had written a grant, um, you know, to, to do that. And we talked about his match and, you know, coming up with more, you know, match as we do it. But I certainly would love to be able to get Rin to the top of it. You know, so people could drive up there if they didn't, if they weren't able to hike all the way from the school and go that way and have a little parking area. I think that would be great to, to mm -hmm. do that as part of, you know, when they clean up the landing. Um, but I I know right now you guys have a conservation, obviously you put your 2,500 a year into it. So into your capital fund. So I'm assuming that that's, you would wanna put it in there earmarked for trails. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, you know, we find um, the 2,500 that we get um, pretty small. It's usually just gone before, you know, you even know. Um, it's funny just how things come up, you know, how it is. So, yeah, we're hoping that, um, you know, a, a good chunk of change like this can possibly give us, you know, would be great. So that's, that's wonderful. I think by the time that, you know, once you do it and see what current, you know, pricing is, and once you pay for the road improvement in the parking lot, I don't know how much money would be there, but, um, you know, certainly it'd be the select board's decision, but I think it's, I think it's a, I think, frankly, I think it's a great request. And I think it's a smart thing to do with any of the money that's left over. Cool. I think you, you've got some great synergy happening within our town, not just what uh, Therese was mentioning of like the rec committee wanting to work on the trails, but the school, the middle school has just uh, for two years now had, has launched an outdoor ed program, which is going to be eventually expanding into the high school, but really the Bethel site has the better set of woods for an outdoor program. So they really want to make it the center of that program. Um, and I'm happy to help connect you guys. I, I work really closely with the woman who's currently running it. Um, and I, I just think you've got some really great kind of connections happening at the moment. And it's kind of a great moment in time to just launch that and, and start making those connections through through the different patches of woods and getting them connected as one longer trail is really, it's awesome. By doing, by doing the, uh, the, uh, am I, can anybody hear me? Yeah. Yep. Go ahead, Mom. Okay. By doing the logging, you're going to already establish some, uh, some good walking trails anyways through the wood roads, you know, so that's going to save a lot of money for, for the, Conservation Commission, because you are going to have some trails in there already, through my opinion. 
That's a good point. You're right. Once they skid them out and everything, you're going to have little log roads. So you're right, Mo. I, I, okay. That's an excellent point. Dave, did you have something? Aaron. Yeah. Looked into the, uh, I don't believe they've done any of the uh, harvest behind the school. That's right next to it within a, a trail. Is that something that the forester would look at? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think that is something. I That's nothing that, you know, that hasn't come to our attention on this project yet, but uh, absolutely. I tried to get him to do something when I was on the school board and just it never happened. If you're going to be up in Quimby and you want to make trails to the attach to the school, a log road going down into the uh, skid road going down there pulling some of that pine would be a good start on a trail. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. There are we've looked at the map, and there are um, two, I believe, property owners between the school and the Quimby Town Forest. And one of them, um, is, one big one, is uh, Dennis Wood, and I think you have no problem with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We we feel like we can, uh, you know, you know, work with um, other residents, so. You know, we've had pretty good luck so far with everything we've done. You know, everybody's been pretty open to stuff. So, yeah, no, that's a great point, though. Thank and you. Are, and are you going to do a whole tree harvesting or just saw log harvesting? Uh, that that's up to the conservation commission, um, and I can lay that out for them. Uh, however, we we can put it out to bid to anybody. You know, uh, I would recommend kind of local people just to kind of keep it local economy sort of there's plenty of great loggers in the Bethel that region um, put it out to bid that way and I think you could do cut to length you could do whole tree with a grapple skitter you could do a cable skitter but there's not many cable skitter guys around and that would take a little long so probably either cut to length or um, with a floor because well, I, I may saw something where you're going to not lock the tops uh, yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, so in the groups, so I'm calling for groups to get regeneration going. So in, in those groups, any tops or anything we can leave to kind of get deer not to come through there and munch on all the trees we're trying to grow, the better off we'll be at regenerating it. So leaving some tops and debris in those groups would be kind of the goal that would break down eventually and you wouldn't see it. It's really good. A lot of good benefits for that, not just to deter deer, um, soil health. Thank you. What kind of equipment are, are we planning on in there? Fairly heavy, substantial equipment, or lighter, lighter uh, logging equipment, skidders, whatever. Yeah, yeah. The um, there's just not that many lighter equipment anymore. Uh, it, you know, the skidder the guy with the skidder and chainsaw. Are there. Well, there's, there's one guy local. There's one guy local that's got a forwarder. Yeah, who's that, Derek? Paul Trigetti? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking I'd no, uh, like Jed oh. Scott. I don't think I know him. But yeah, I mean, um, I don't think uh, it's pretty flat, and I think you could any kind of equipment be appropriate um, out there, but it would probably be on the heavier end just based on what's proper equipment nowadays. Um, and, and if it's competitively bid, People with bigger equipment can be more productive and faster, but we could always set it to a certain type of equipment too. I've done that with um, with town. So we want a cut to length system. We want a small skitter, you know, chainsaw operator. We can do that. Do you have a preference, Mo? I mean, if we're gonna. Well, I was just looking at destructiveness to the land because a lot of logging operations, you get equipment in there, then pretty soon you. You've got ruts that people fall into with the bigger equipment, and, and uh, I'm not that type of a person liking that. I, I believe in uh, well, if you could find somebody with a horse, it'd be a lot better way to <laughs> would be practical. Right. Well, I think what we would have to do is, um, you know, go with obviously what you know AJ's recommendations about what we put up there. I do like right. the idea of local. Obviously, we have you know plenty of loggers in the area. So I think that's a good idea. And then um, too, we can always talk about as far as um, with AJ part of the RFP, we 
um, certainly can talk about what's, you know, left behind, how it's managed and, and, you know, that sort of thing. So, but I do like the idea of being able to access that and having some parking so people could get up there and do more walking. And obviously our big hope is eventually people park at the school and do, you know, the whole walk. Mm. But, um, but we'll see what we get. It looks like, <clears throat> it looks like there's a good, you know, laid out plan here and you know, I, I, there's probably some smaller details to iron out between, <clears throat> you know, the bid, the bid end of things, um, and equipment and things like that. You know, um, access near, near the the property owner or something like that. But um, I mean, I I'd be very comfortable with you know allowing this to move forward and and continuing for AJ and Farron to work with Therese to 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 make it you know happen and and I think. You know, speaking for myself, but I'm sure the board members as well. That you know, between AJ and Farron, they probably have our best uh, interests at hand, and and everybody else's. So I would, uh, I would make a motion to allow the timber harvest for the Quimby Forest. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, so then Farron, we, Farron, we talked about this when I was on the Conservation Commission six years ago, seven years ago with Mary Floyd. Uh huh, great. Yeah, thank you for uh, bringing it back. I know the Conservation Commission uh, actually disbanded there for a couple of years or something. And I think you and Mary got it back together, right? That's great. Thank you. So I think then, Farron, I'll just wait and hear from you and AJ um, about, um, you know, recommendations and RFPs, and then AJ will send an agreement so that we can, that I can sign for an agreement to move forward with him. I can read that over, and then um, we can work out the bid details together. Obviously, there's some RFP language, but I'm sure that, AJ, you probably have a sample, so we can work through that together, so. Yep. Yeah, I could send you, yeah, I'll send you all the samples I got and Okay. We can work on the language and all that. So. All right, that sounds good. So, um, yeah, you'll just email me, and then three of us will stay in contact, and we'll. Great. We'll get ahead in the right direction. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you again for your patience this evening. We were a little behind there, Farron and AJ, but um, <clears throat> glad you guys stuck around and were able to move forward with our goals here for our town force. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, good evening. Have a good evening. Well, we can open it up to town uh, to public comment now if there's anybody left. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, um, you know, if there is anybody that's on that uh, has any comments that's not on the agenda, um, we're just going to be getting into our non appointment <clears throat> agenda items now, uh, which it looks like a majority of them we're probably going to get through pretty quick. Um, then we'll go over the budget discussion, um, some budget information. So if there's anything under public comment, now's the time to do it. I only see Wayne and Jean and Lisa out there, I think. So keep keeping everybody awake. So hearing none we will move on there's Therese um, so we have the better connections grant resolution that was in our packet yeah, so that's just another part of what we talked about at the last meeting I told Rick Benson that you guys were going to adopt it tonight and he needs to sign it as the chair of the planning commission um, it's at the back door already on a clipboard for you guys to sign along with liquor licenses and um, mm -hmm. like this is just another piece of what we need. I may have to write a letter of support. I don't know. Um, so that's, I do okay. all put that in there, but um, this just, you know, moves along the process. Sounds good. So we just need a motion to adopt the uh, Better Connections grant. Resolution. So move. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 
Therese, quick question for you. Yeah. On your town manager report, you talk about asking for thirty thousand dollars in clean water funds. Is that yeah. in addition to this from last time we talked, or is that part? Was it, part was on, it was on the um, thing that you got last time in your packet. It okay. was the grant plus the thirty thousand in clean water. It was all on there with the same match. So this is just part of it. It's just a resolution okay. we need to adopt. But um, so yeah, we're still moving forward with applying for that money. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. We have a we had Mackenzie Hill's res resignation from the Equity and Inclusion Committee, and there was uh, a, there was some communications that was in our packet for that. So I just need a motion for that. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? All Aye. <clears throat> and then we have Jody, uh, I'm sorry. And then we have uh, Judy and Mo Brigham's resignation from the Solid Waste Board, um, which is effective uh, March 3rd. Is that correct, Mo? Yep. So if we don't vote yes on this, they have to stay on the board? Correct. <laughs> yes. That's my, that's Wrong. That was and Mo yeah. will never talk to me again. <laughs> That's a fact. It's an automatic renewal. <clears throat> so I know that Dave Eddy has attended at least one, if not two, meetings. And, you know, basically it's a discussion for you to have because currently there's two select board members and a member of the public on the Royalton side. So whether or not you want two members on yours or just... Um, one select board member and, and another volunteer. I know that we're expecting Bobby Young's rec, um, resignation also probably, you know, Wednesday after their BRTS meeting. So for the same time, so we'll still be looking for community volunteers um, alongside either one or two select board members, so. I mean, I, I know ideally, I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't really stay in the, in the guidelines, but you know, the, the thought was that we would have three individuals from the Bethel community that would be our representation there, other than select people. Um, and I know over the years we've had, you know, it seems to be the norm is to have one select board identity on that board that can be a liaison between between the two boards. Um, you know, I I would, you know, I guess my opinion would be to try and stick with you know, one select board identity and then two, um, you know, citizens of the town that are not select board um, in a perfect world. Uh, we all know it's not perfect and sometimes we can't find volunteers that want to do it, but um, I don't know who we're going to get. Have we had anybody that's interested, uh, Mo or Therese? Nobody's approached, nobody's approached me. No, and of course we just got the resignation. So if we put something out on front porch forum listing that we're, you know, still looking for planning commission members right. and looking for, um, you know, two, two members of, um, for the BRTS board, then, you know, we'll put that out on front porch forum and see what we can get along with. Um, so BRTS and the planning commission. Yeah. I mean, we, it's probably, you know, something that we probably should have somebody from the board that if either they are just filling in an interim capacity while, while we look for other members or, um, or if they want to get on permanently, I think it's probably good that we do get somebody on the board if that's either, you know, Dave or somebody else or, you know, either Gene or Wayne or whoever wins Mo's seat. Um, I, I know at least right now because Chris, Chris and I from the other board are, are talking about some of the potential future of that site that I know him and I have both um, said that we would like to like to stay off of those boards um, so that we can have a kind of a non-bias take on the whole process that we're trying to go through. So I, I, I wouldn't uh, volunteer myself at least now. Um, Dave, are you willing to continue on that board for, you know, for either for a while or for um, for a while anyway? It's only a year appointment, correct? 
Right. Well, there you go. That's great. <laughs> One down, two to go. <laughs> Still outnumbered, though. <laughs> yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wonder who we have in the community that might be, you know, willing well, to, to do that. We'll, and, uh, we'll put it out on Front Porch Forum and see, you know, who we can see, see who responds. Yeah. So I'll make sure we do that this week. In the perfect world, you wouldn't have a select board member on it anyways, as Chris said, because right. I never considered myself as a member of the select board when I was down there. I was representing Bethel mm -hmm. and uh, not the select board per se. And that was sort of my feeling and knowing that Dave was um, stepping up for the year. I wasn't going to, but if we really just felt we needed to have representation and, and have equal representation to South Royalton, I would be willing to. I just think that, you know, like Mo and Chris have both said, I it felt weird to be a select board member on that board. Um, but if it's needed, yeah, absolutely. Well, we can put it on from the forum and see what we get. And then if at least you could fill in, you know, after, you know, at least for the April meeting or something with mm -hmm. Dave, if we don't have anybody signed up by then. What about Lily? I'm working on her. I just sent Teresa <laughs> a message separately saying that I was working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we uh, just need a uh, motion. Did we already do the motion for Judy no, and Mo? We agreed we weren't going to. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no. So move. <laughs> Are you not going to? <laughs> no, that I don't. That that uh, you accept our resignation. <laughs> I'll second. Sounds that. like it sounds like you have a conflict of interest in this, Mo. You might want to excuse yourself while we uh, put you okay, back. Okay, I'll, I'll abstain. <laughs> I would second that, and I'd like to thank Mo and Judy for jumping right in there through all the recent turmoil that's going on down there, and uh, they've been there on Saturdays and and you know did a did a fine job representing spent, Bethel and helping out down there. So much appreciated. I spent, I, spent two, I spent two months down there while Jen was in with her knee. And it's been a hoop, really. Mm. Well, yeah, they, definitely they've gone above and beyond, you know, their duties down there. And, you know, especially with Jen and, and uh, her being um, in and out. Um, uh, it's, you know, I, I see him down there often. So he's Definitely earned all his comp time that he has now. <laughs> all right. Uh, then we have liquor licenses. If I get these wrong trees, feel free to just uh, stop me. But um, so we have a second class liquor license renewal for Champlain Farms. And we have uh, Babe, Babe's Bar, we have a class one and a class three, as well as an outside renewal. Yep. And then Central Market is a class two re renewal. Yep. Does, does anybody have any questions in regards to any of those licenses, renewals? I think just the only comment I just had on the outside <clears throat> renewal for Babe's Bar, just like we've talked about in the past with any um, events that are outside the building is to make sure that they, you know, obviously they get to um, stay up to code and, and make sure that their site is well, well marked and supervised and things like that, um, that we don't run into any issues with alcohol leaving the premise or people coming in that's not supposed to be there or well, it looks like they're trying to expand their outside consumption because of COVID. So, we'll, so one thing is, yeah, the DLC approves it. So the Department mm, of Liquor Control right. or your local liquor control agent is going to come down and scope it out anyways. So they have yeah. currently have a 58 foot by 16 and a half foot area attached to the west side of the building and the area is enclosed. It includes fenced porched area from 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. But if you look at their um, application, uh, they're adding additional space 
So I looked at the back of theirs. Um, they had a map. And I, now it explains something to me now. So it looks like what he's adding is their including the front of their building now. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, let me flip this. Up. Hang on a second. I got to look at their map. Yeah, so they are. So they're adding the front of the building right up to um, where the sidewalk, you know, comes. They're adding the front of the building, plus they're adding the side where um, where their camper is. So they're base. They're really enlarging this quite yeah. a bit. And I'm not sure liquor control is going to give them all that space. Um, what I wish that he had asked or which he had added in here, which he did not, um, a measurement for that space. But I can see right now where he's, you know, he outlined his parcel, but then, as I said, he's going outside. So he yeah. wants to do the front as well as the side. So I think the only way that, um, well, wouldn't you think that the, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, wouldn't you think that the front would be very hard to do anyways? Cause you have to have a, you have to have a permanent, non-permanent, you know, barrier area, you know. And right, and people you know, drive. They don't take it down every day. How does people drive in then, you know? Well, and that, that's how my it question work. is people drive in through there. You know what I would say, honestly, I would say this. Um, I think that you should approve all but their outside consumption permit yes, and I let agree. me speak to Jesse because I, um, I didn't catch this until just now, and the front of it does not give me enough description for me to yeah. recommend you approve his. So I would say approve everything but the outside consumption permit. Let me speak with Jesse and Owen and mm -hmm. understand this a little better because, yes, they can take down. You're right. They, would, they only have to have a, pay, a barrier, so they could have temporary fencing, but they're talking, you know, if they're thinking about taking it up and down every time, um, I'm not sure you'd also want to give them 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. access for the whole property. Um, so that's my recommendation is give them all but the outside consumption permit. They certainly have time and um, we can add it to your next agenda. I can get more information. The events that we had down there too, um, they had to obtain additional insurance and there was a whole series of regulations about letting people in, having a monitor, uh, checking IDs and no alcohol leaving the premises. I mean, it was quite a bit more involved liability wise. It is. And, and it's <clears throat> their hoops to jump through and the DLC, you know, liquor control guys or gal, whoever it is, is going to come down for your area and go through it with them and, and they that's exactly right they're going to have to have people outside and making sure that alcohol doesn't leave that nobody's buying it and handing it to someone underage so um i would suggest that we get more information from them um because this what i'm seeing here is not enough and it doesn't even have any dimensions or on how he's going to deal with it and i didn't catch it until just now so yeah. my bad so let's just get them everything but that <clears throat> okay, so let's um, we'll run down these. We'll have to get motions separately on these. So uh, we'll need a motion to renew the liquor license class two for Champlain Farms. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Yep. And then um, I'll need a motion <clears throat> to renew the liquor license class two for. Central Market. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then last but not least, um, I'll need a motion to renew the liquor license class one and class three for Babes Bar. So moved. Uh, now is that amended? No, we're not going to do the outside okay. application at this time, just the one and three. Okay. Second. Right, Trace? Yeah. yeah. I need a second. So um, uh, who made the motion? Uh, who moved it? Paul, Paul, Paul moved it. it. Lindley oh. seconded it? Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, 
Teresa, I just had one quick question about the babes thing before we move on. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm asking here, but is there sort of an order of operation of like, they get a pre-approval from the liquor control board and then they get approval from us or do they have to get approval from us? Like, I guess I'm just kind of curious us if first. really the first step. You are the first step, okay. yeah. Because you can say no, you can say we'll make it smaller, we'll do this, <laughs> do that. So no, it comes to you first and then um, as local liquor control board and then it goes to um, the Department of Liquor Control and they will, they'll, and they could still deny it even if you've approved it, but right. um, they'll put more caveats on it. But of course, the adhering to the law is Abe's sole responsibility. But now that I see the back of this, um, and and so we could tech, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but technically we could look at their request and say we won't approve this, but if you made it just that side yard piece and extended your fencing, yes. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Those adjustments at this point now. Okay. Yep. And you can also set the hours. Um, I've that's been done before. You know, you can also say, yeah, no, if you're going to do this much space, or then you can't have the hours that you're requesting, and because they're right now they're doing noon to midnight, um, and that would be seven days a week. So, <clears throat> but so you can and you can make those adjustments, but they're certainly looking at really. In, um, changing it. So I'll talk to, I'll send Jesse and Owen an email tomorrow and just have them come to the next select board meeting and yeah. um, but uh, I'll, I'll hash it out with them anyways, just to see what they're talking about. And it, <clears throat> it would be nice to know, well, not only what the dimensions are, the locations that they want, right. but also their intended uh, barrier, temporary oh, what, yeah. what I agree. And measures in place for that. Yep. I agree. You want to know what type of barrier they're going to do? How often? Yeah, they, they just kind of do snow right. fencing, or yeah, you know, put up a little fence. I don't know. You know, just I agree. I find it very hard that they'll be able to do anything in front because of the whole drive system, and I don't know yeah. if I manage I, that I, with I boundaries. Voltage, but what, Dave? High voltage electric fence. No. <laughs> Not collars. <laughs> <laughs> just put this on you'll feel fine <laughs> right if you get too far away it'll zap you <laughs> um, yeah there we go Teresa, i guess my other question with that um <clears throat> I, just, I don't know the law so i'm sorry for asking all these things but like yeah. i know that they're maybe they're maybe not pursuing the food truck in the same way but i think they're still pursuing food does that play into this at all in terms of like outdoor seating and eating or is it really just we're just sort of weighing in on the liquor piece of this you're just weighing in on the liquor piece of it about right. where they can you know do that as far as food outdoor food yeah i think that they're i'm not sure about the the um trailer what's going to happen there i've had a conversation with them over the winter about that it's not what they had hoped it was going to be so um they want to make it go away well, <laughs> but we don't really have a say in the outside food. No, no, they we'll can have a policy. No, know. the Department of Health will have say in that and right. um, make, you know, about that, but not really, not right now. Um, not as part of this, we don't, anyways. There's an issue with the trailer and, and the bylaws that you're telling um, me about. I've already talked to them about the zoning regulations there, oh. and they were you know, because it wasn't a permanent fixture and they were thinking about moving it. And so there was, you know, I think they're kind of just, maybe it wasn't what they had hoped it would be. And um, so I think that's the kind of up in the air. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, anything further in regards to any of the liquor licenses? Are we good to move forward? Okay. And we have the budget information um, there's a very large crowd out there, so of uh, one whole person. Um, uh, just briefly, what I want to bring up, uh, other than you know, we can dive into you know department by department if we want. Um, I do know that um, kind of overview wise, when we were looking at the budget, uh, we were looking at a you know, one to two percent increase in the budget, and then you know, uh, 
which which would be probably around a little over a cent increase um, to the taxpayers. Um, one thing that Teresa and I did find out through, um, we did have an increase in the grand list. So the, the proposed increase, which the net increase this year, once you figure in the revenue and cost, the net budget increase was about $16,000 over last year, which normally is about, it, it's just slightly under a penny. Um, a penny is like uh, usually 19 and a half thousand per penny. Um, but we also had an increase on in the grand list by 34,000. So 34,000 is actually a pretty decent increase on the grand list. And that has all but taken that increase out uh, due to the grand list and actually has given us a slight decrease in the budget now. Yeah, and so like I said, I mean, that was Where's their preliminary grand here? list. They don't lodge the grand list until oh, after April 1st yeah. because April 1st is, you know, they have to have all the PTRs and stuff in. So there still could be a little change in the grand list. Yeah. That was just what it was at the time when I filed it. So we'll know better um, when you go to set the tax rate in June. So, so what would have been a, you know, before we were looking just a little over a penny increase yeah. with what there's predicting to be the grand list increases, yeah. that this now will actually be a net decrease of about a little over a penny. Yeah. So we'll know for sure once we go to set the tax rate in, um, you know, in, in June when you set the tax rate, once the grand list has been filed and you know, all those sorts of things. If you have any um, people who challenge, you know, once you go out and do your grievances, you'll be able to see if anybody challenges the value of their property. So, you know, that's where we stand right now, so. And, and I'll just go over it just briefly, just, I know we don't have, uh, Jean, I think is the only person left, um, and Lisa, um, but we do have Orca, so there are people that might want to see it from home. Um, so I'm just going to do kind of an, an, you know, a high level overview of the budget. I think um, that's a good idea. If anybody, you know, if Gene or somebody, you know, just raise your hand if you have a question or something, we can answer that. Um, revenue wise, our revenues really didn't change much from year over to year. Um, we're predicting about $3,000 worth of more revenue um, with this budget as we did in the previous budget. Um, which, when I say revenues, that's the local revenues from, you know, money that you get from. Uh, you know, highway revenues, um, your revenues that come in through the town clerk and um, things like that. Um, getting into the cost side of things, um, you'll see that the public works right now, I mean, uh, overall was a net decrease um, uh, this year. Um, we were looking at, um, I mean, of course, you know, kind of hard to, right now, you know, we have some position, you know, positions to fill and do they come in with a family plan or not a family plan? So there's a lot of things that could swing one way or the other. Um, Teresa has budgeted to, you know, if you hire somebody, they're going to have a family plan. Um, and if they don't, then that's a savings to the town. Um, so, you know, you do, we'll, we'll see some public works personnel, um, proposed budget increases mainly because of that. Um, the, um, there, there's a couple areas where we kind of move some money from one, one section of the budget to another, um, with some of like the hired services and things like that. Um, some of the, um, and some of the time associated with some of our labor has been moved from, um, you know, some of this to like parks, parks and places and things like that. Uh, materials is probably the biggest thing that, that um, went down, but um, a majority of that is the result of the ERAF. Um, the ERAF was, you know, we had 118,000 in our last one where this one we were, we were just budgeting just for the ERAF that we did this year, which was a little over 43,000. 
So that leaves us just the ERA for Pinello. Yep. Budgeted this, so we've done everything else, and we actually received like three hundred and forty-four thousand. So um, I'm going. So we're going to pay off our um, line of credit because obviously that was the agreement with Mastoma was if we had. Um, we get paid, we pay them, so we have another payment. So we're going to pay off our line of credit for Mastoma, which is great because we'll need to use it again when we start Pinello. And mm -hmm. um, hopefully that RFP will be done here in a few weeks. I've, our act or last time, actually, Chris Bump from the state has been doing a, working on it and getting their structures, people to look at it. And he and I had a good phone conversation about that and other grants that we're eligible for um, the other day. So so just so you know, that will be the last of our ERAF will be for Pinello. And just so people um, that may not know what the ERAF is all about, you know, we did have the spring flood of 19. Is that right? Yep. 19, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Spring flood of 19 uh, did approximately a little bit over a million dollars worth of damage to our roads and infrastructure. Um, we have done a majority of that work to date. Uh, we have the Pinella Bridge that is left. Um, in the past, we have, you know, raked up uh, quite the, the uh, bill and we've either retired that in a, a loan or something like that. We retired um, 118,000 of it last year. Um, and then this year we're going to retire 43,000, which is probably going to leave us somewhere around, I don't know, another 40,000 or something to retire next year. But I think it'll be more because we still have to do the temporary P vine, uh, P vine, temporary Pinello and the permanent Pinello, you know, so it'll be the ERAF on both. So it, we had like, you know, out of all of it, I mean, we're usually on the hook for what, around 12 and a half percent. Exactly. 12 and a half. So, which is roughly say around 200,000 or so. Um, so we, we have not taken a loan out on any of this. We have, you know. We've got a line of credit. So yeah, we've kind of, we paid some interest yeah. as we've gone along, you know, to, but um, like I said. We've decided to pay all this ERAF money off, you know. Um, so we have pretty much all that paid off through our budgets other than the little bit for Pinello. Um, fire department really didn't change much. Uh, constable department went up just slightly. Um, you know, there was some savings at the constable department overall, um, but the big ticket item that went up was the replacing the solar speed signs that were outdated. And uh, these will be with a better model that will actually charge itself. So we don't have to worry about, you know, charging it, bringing it in and out. Um, so that's in that budget. The recreation committee or the recreation department is pretty much levelly funded, slightly up. Um, the uh, parks and public places is up, uh, but some of that is just been uh, a portion of that is the money that we've earmarked in there to do some updates to the stone wall in front of the municipal parking lot. Yep. Um, and then I think there was just a little bit of some wages and stuff that was moved from one department to another. Um, but a majority of the change there is just doing the, um, or at least starting some of the maintenance of the stone wall that we're probably gonna have to do some more, but at least- right. I'm still waiting for an estimate started. from um, Tristan Klein, so we'll have a better idea what I'm looking at. And the municipal budget's pretty pretty much level funded as well. It's up, uh, you know, almost four thousand um, dollars. But um, ter you know, Therese, nothing's really changed in the municipal office other than you know we've just been continuing to. Um, I think retirement was the biggest mover there, the budget budget for retirement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, town hall slightly down. Um, you know, that's not really a very large budget anyways. Um, town officials, uh, 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 Paul chickened out again this year, didn't give us an increase. So we're still levelly funded there. Um, uh, but all the comp time that you could ever need. Uh, the Lister's office, um, pretty much the same budget as last year. And, um, as we had agreed 
you know, get put ten thousand dollars in there for assessor services. Um, just you know, the listers office is still um, still short a body. Um, I guess a body and a half because we will have you know a, a retirement at that position. So um, so there's some money set aside there if we need some um, outside help. The government operations um, <clears throat> is down. Um, you know, may, uh, uh, I might just go through these items just kind of briefly um, because we kind of moved a lot of this stuff around in here. I mean, overall it's down, but um, um, legal, we took the legal down by half. We've been budgeting $20,000 a year. We brought it down to 10. Legal is a really tough one because one year you might need forty thousand dollars, and then the next year you might not need anything. Um, but as we learned, we can't build a fund. Is that correct? Right. So we had talked about maybe doing like a fund where we could just don't, you know, put whatever ten thousand dollars a yeah. year, and if we ever need it, we could use it. And then we talked about establishing a policy for undesignated fund balance and try and deal with it there. Um, auditing service is pretty much the same. Uh, and then some of the bigger movers at the bottom, uh, we put more money in there for the reappraisal fund, which um, I think we all agree that the uh, the re town wide reappraisal we're probably looking at two years or yeah, it's a most out from doing, yeah. uh, and, I, and we only have uh, a little more than half of it set aside. So, um, so we've upped that by fifteen thousand, and the capital reserve um, fund we. Have brought that slightly under this year, um, but some of that is going to be balanced off with the the potential loan payment for the um, new municipal garage. So, yeah. um, the biggest mover. Oh, let's see that. Oh, appropriations there. Um, everything was pretty much the same, other than we do have the Bethel Library. Um, uh, that had an increase there in regards to some of the computer systems that they had there um, that need some updating. So that was the really the biggest mover there, um, as well as we um, did put $2,000 in for the Bethel Ford Festival this year. Um, so they have a, a budget. Hopefully we'll be able to have it. COVID will get out of here and we'll uh, be able to do it. Human services, um, you know, kind of a same type of uh, increase that we usually see where somewhere around 3% a year, it goes up, um, which was, uh, you know, a little, well, which was uh, not quite $1,000. White River Valley Ambulance was about the same. Um, so the appropriations overall about the same last year. Um, and then you just see at the bottom there, the, the debt services there, um, some, uh, some of the long-term debt went down, but we did have the payment or potential estimated payment of what we think the municipal garage would be uh, that is budgeted in here. Um, so, so if you're just looking at the cost wise, cost over year over year is about $19,400 difference from last year. But like I said, once you factor in uh, the increase in uh, revenue of three thousand, it's about a net increase of sixteen thousand this year. Um, and then again, usually sixteen thousand dollars is uh, you know just under a penny increase. Um, but with some of the uh, grand list potential uh, increases here, that we're actually going to be looking at a savings this year, maybe about a penny. And we're still not sure what the state's going to do, I guess, about school tax. We were thinking nine cent increase. Then I heard the governor say it may be three. And then the next time I heard it was maybe level fund it. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I mean, I know that was a consideration or at least a conversation we all had about what was the school right. tax was going to do. So, um, but no, I think that's good. I think it's a good overview. And yeah, I mean, we can go, you know, I, I, I mean, there's not many people on, but if we get any questions, we can always, um, get more in depth the next one. Yeah, and we'll see. Um, so the next meeting is, so you will have another meeting next Monday, which you don't normally have, but that is mm -hmm. at six o'clock and that's your special meeting for the budget. So that's on the 15th. That's the one that's been advertised in town report. 
um, as your first budget informational meeting, then you're required to have another one at your next right. meeting, which would be, you know, your last meeting in, in uh, February before town hall. So we'll do the same thing. We'll put that on first on the agenda. So um, it will, should be the only thing on your agenda for next week. And then <clears throat> the end of the month, we'll put it on first. So um, if, to, to piggyback with the budget informational meeting, I mean, um, I mean, would it be wise? I mean, again, for the candidates that are running for the board position, um, give them an opportunity at one or both of these meetings to, you know, if they want to promote themselves for running for, for office or, I mean, what do you think about that? Could. I know the Rotary is sponsoring um, a, a Zoom thing that both Gene and Wayne are signed up for. So, um, you know, I just would make sure if you want to do that, then we should definitely um, reach out, make sure that, you know, both are present or both can be present. But that's fine. No, I just, I just, I mean, it's hard to tell how many people we actually reach. I mean, I know, I don't know, but it, I mean, usually I there's 12 at the most that's, that's yeah. on here, but obviously there are people that, that um, review the ORCA uh, yeah. media coverage. So I don't know how many people that reaches. Um, I think it'd be good if, you know, if you gave both Wayne and uh, Gene an opportunity to stand up and say, you know, a couple minutes about each other or about each other, about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Gene, mm. you talk about Wayne. Wayne will talk about you. So about themselves and why. That would be kind of cool. That would be. And then, um, and then you know, just a couple of minutes about why they're running and a little bit about yeah. themselves. And Gene, It'd be like one of those um, things you used to do when you were in school where you had to sit down with the other person. You had to get all the information. Then you had to go present it in front of everybody. Right. Yeah, I was going to say we could, we could make it like we do with the kids at school. You can only say positive things about yeah. the other person. So you report on the other person. But has to be positive. <laughs> right, that would be kind of neat. Gene did a nice post on Front Porch Forum. That was nice. That was gave a lot of information about Gene. I thought that was um, very nice. I know Wayne was on. I, I he might have dropped off. Um, he did. But uh, I can reach out. Um, obviously, Gene's on right now. But uh, either I can or Teresa, if you I can reach out and if. It, maybe we could just, um, you know, I don't know what would be a realistic time, you know, if we gave 15 or 20 minutes for both people um, and just put it on there. Well, uh, how long do you normally do at town meeting? I mean, I think you spoke uh, for five minutes or less, you know, yeah. you talked about yourself. I think you're yeah. looking at a smaller couple minutes. Yeah. I think the school is having their informational meeting at five o'clock next Monday night. Oh, good. Perfect. Call in. I believe it's only a call in. They don't do a, a Zoom thing. Mm -hmm. But that's going to happen at five o'clock. So I think there'll be a certain number of people that'll be there uh, instead of with us. Yeah. Well, it's good that we're doing it a couple. I mean, we'll have done it three times. So that'll be good. But yeah, I can email Wayne and just Gene too and just tell them to give them five minutes and on the 15th. And sure. um, I think that's plenty. So I will write that down right now. But Jean, did you have a question about the budget? You had your hand up. Uh, I did. White River Valley Ambulance page. Yep. Their report. Third paragraph, last sentence. I can't make sense out of it. In 2021, the per capita amount will increase by $1 to $61 or 1.67%. One I've got a, the question is about percent signs and dollar signs, I think. Uh, okay. but, and I could not reconcile that at all with, with, with what is on their uh, monthly payments page. Okay. Well, they submit their own budget, obviously, and their own write-up. So I'm sure nobody on our end just caught the detail of what they submitted. So um, if you have a specific question, you can email me and I can get the answer from Steve Webster. He's the one who sends us our monthly information um, updated from Warva. But yeah, that's how they bill us is on a per capita and, and um, uh, and what their increase will be and, and all that. But if you have a specific question, Jean, just email me and I'll get you the answer. 
And um, thank you for mentioning that because uh, we obviously didn't catch it proofreading town report. So I'll get an answer for the 15th. The other, the other challenge we have often, uh, Gene, with the White River Valley Ambulance is, um, is they give us their budget based on the calendar year versus our, um, our budgeting year. So uh, whatever they give us now, we're really only carrying about six months of that um, because of the way it falls, so. Yeah, and then we project out what we think we're, what the increase will be and, you know, try to carry it. But, um, but yeah, Gene, I'll double check it and read it and then I'll reach out to Steve and find out what it should say and then we'll know so i appreciate that well the other the other thing was with their report there is no comparison with prior years so that you have some sense or i couldn't find it yeah uh there's no sense of wh where this increase takes effect and where anyway so i will uh i'll I'll send you, Teresa, something about that. Yeah, and that I, I just... think too, they have limited space in the town report, so they present, yeah, they've kind of presented the same way for years, but maybe it's something to, to talk to them about. I think the only way you could tell is by looking at our budget um, under WARVA, you could go back and look at, you know, what we have budgeted for ACFOs over the last few years. All right, I just saw that and just, whatever okay no but that's good you know we read it and you just after a while you just don't catch these things so i'm glad that you mentioned it so we can get an answer for people so we should also mention about page 55 yes i have the actual um so page 55 of the town report the top of it is accurate that is the delinquent tax list i did that and then at the end there was just a lot of um you know there were people were gone. And so I grabbed what I thought because it was dated 2020. I grabbed out of Kelly's folder what I thought was the updated delinquent water sewer list, put it in because she wasn't there, refit the page so that we didn't have three blank pages. And then when Kelly was going through the report after it already been printed, she said, page 55 is wrong. And I'm like, oh, great. But there's always at least one mistake in town report. So I figure it was accurate as of that time. It just happened to be printed twice. Um, and what's unfortunate is the actual list had dropped. So now I'm, it's in your packet, of course. Right. It's down to only 42519 So I think that's something that we'll mention next week, Chris, on the 15th, mm -hmm. is letting people know that was accurate as of 2020. What I should have been looking for was January 2021 and um, just to mm -hmm. let people know. So, um, you know, that's the way it is. It's always something. Um, and, and that was, was it. So we will, um, you know, I'm not going to publish that list, of course, but um, no need now, but at least let people know that it's better than the 70 some odd thousand that's on that page. If there are people whose names are on that page now, but who shouldn't be on the page, it might be wise to at least correct that one. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I don't know how we're going to do it now. I mean, we don't have, you know, when we have a public town meeting. It, we can say, in the, we right, can but in the, in, the, in the informational meetings. It, yeah, yeah. Yep, just say all. what it is. Yeah, because um, obviously as of that date in 20. Twenty, it's an accurate list. Now it's sure. it's different, but we do have a new list and um, or an updated list that should have gone in. So we'll let people know um, that it was a mistake. On you know, page fifty five has an error on it. Normally, what we would do, Gene, is we'd go around every chair and we would put that page on the chair so people have it. And now, you know, we don't. So I suppose I could put it on my screen and do a share screen during the on the fifteenth, but. What are you going to do? So I think I, uh, we can talk about it after, but I think I figured out the White River Valley ambulance piece of the, 
the um, so what they were saying that the <clears throat> the per capita amount is it increased by a dollar, which happens to be a dollar. Or I'm sorry, increases a dollar, which which for our town is is uh, one point six seven percent of last year's budget. So if you take the last year's budget, which if you take um, lost my place here. Um, You take the number that they had last year, which was <clears throat> uh, and you add the one and you add the one point seven percent, it comes out pretty close to that number that we have in there right now. But but again, it, there's some finagling again because they're only telling us what's gonna go through December of twenty twenty one, even though our budget goes until, you know. June of 2022. So it's kind of a, you know, we try to like pick up half of it, you know what I mean? So it's a little weird how that one goes, but at least it's been pretty, pretty favorable the last couple of years. So. Yeah. I forgot the, that's right. They're on a calendar year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it doesn't really add up. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, My only other comment and I don't, I don't know that it, we would need to take time with more people, but the Quintown Senior Center, uh, which is one of the agencies that requests and we support uh, with a few bucks. Um, I'm, I'm curious why we're supporting them and the Royalton Senior Center, uh, because it seems to me that that uh, Hancock is a pretty fur piece uh, from Bethel. And, and I'm just curious as to why we're uh, on their list. Or are we one of the Quinn towns, I guess? Is yeah, well, what happens I think is, um, is to let you know, is once somebody makes an appropriation request, um, that it goes in Bethel, it goes in front of the committee. Um, and you could deny someone's request, but they always have the right to stand up at town meeting and ask for money. They could be added or they could petition voters and be added and ask for more. So um, I'm not sure. I'm assuming because Paul should be able to answer the question. He's on the human you know, advisory committee there. So maybe they might send him some data that says how many people from Bethel they currently serve. Um, do you know, Paul, can you answer that? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things we, we spoke about. And historically, there have been um, folks from Bethel going out there. And we also looked at the fact that these types of organizations are feeling so much more pressure now uh, because of the COVID uh, situations uh, to, to provide, they're, they're actually sending out more meals, uh, especially in Royalton and the Quintown. They're producing more meals now than they ever have. And there are still, <clears throat> I guess, a couple of people from Bethel that, that go out to Quintown. And um, so we felt that it was good to support those services because of the additional pressure that they're feeling uh, we did the same thing with the Visiting Nurse uh, <clears throat> Association. We increased their allotment a little bit because uh, they're, uh, once again, under increased pressure because of COVID. So uh, that's uh, basically the reasons. And, and historically, we've supported Quintown because we've had several residents um, take the ride out there uh, using Stagecoach to participate mm -hmm. in the meal program. Thank you. So there you go, Jean. There's a good answer. <laughs> so is that everything you got for the budget? And they do, and they do provide numbers. Uh, everybody who, who requests an appropriation, one of the things that we ask them for specific numbers uh, of Bethel residents that are impacted by the services. So. 
Yeah, and I know, I know, kind of looking through the appropriation summary pages in the back, that you know some agencies uh, do a better job than others with really identifying. Like some will kind of broaden it and say, "This is how many meals we did in the area." Uh, others might say, "We we served exactly fifty four people." You know, so they, um, you know, looking through the Quinn Town one, it doesn't seem as though that they point out. Uh, the exact uh, Bethel residents that they're serving, uh, but they do talk about the 5,000 meals that they had provided in, I guess what you would call their their area. Um, you know, where some some of the other ones might actually tell you, like um, like the Valley Transit one's a really good one because they usually tell you that they provided you know 226,000 rides this year. You know. So you know exactly how many people were served in our community by that, but might be something going forward. Maybe Paul, that you know, even if they don't offer me, we can ask them exactly what what they serve for Bethel residents. You know, if they don't provide it, but yeah, well, we do. Like I said, we we ask that they provide financial data um, and that they get very specific about how many. Bethel residents have served. Now those write-ups are in the back. I'm not quite sure if a lot of those are picked up uh, from previous years or um, uh, or if that's a fresh one from this year. I'm not sure how Kelly handles that uh, that part yeah. of it. Well, like I was saying, you go you look at some of them like Orange County Parent Child Center. They'll actually say you know last year that they you know they served 25 families. Mm -hmm. Um, from Bethel, you know, included 47 adults and 30, 35 children. So they'll, they'll let you know the numbers. The Quinn Town one, I think what Gene was getting at is didn't seem to have that, that, you know, uh, it was more of a macro look than a micro look of how many people it served in our community. But um, yeah, they write, yeah and, so we need to. And I don't have any qualms with supporting them. I just, it's it's a worthy yeah, just, place to put our funds, but I would. Well, thanks, Paul, for <laughs> letting me know. Well, I and I think I knew that in the back of my head, but uh, it's just one of those things. We don't have all the funds in the world either. So, uh, how that gets parceled out, I think, at the end of the day, is uh, it's minor but it's it's of some note okay i'm done did we have anything <laughs> that's all right it was good that we had one person show up that's right um <clears throat> so do we have anything else in regards to the budget um for this evening i know we will we'll hammer this thing to death here over the next couple of visits no, I don't have anything else. I think we're good. And Therese, do you have anything else left on your town manager's report that we haven't picked apart? Um, yeah, right. I just kind of update letting guys know that uh, we found a replacement cruiser. I'll have a little more information from that in another week or so. Um, the fire department's rescue was out of service for a few days. It needed a new transmission, but it is mm -hmm. back in service. Uh, taxes are due Tuesday, February 16th. Normally they're due on Monday the 15th, but because it's a holiday, it's President's Day, we're going to the 16th. I had Kelly put an ad in the paper, something on Front Porch Forum, the usual, um, to remind people. I just thought, you know, I was working on the RFP for the architect for Town Garage. I drafted it. I sent it to Lucian Hinkle, who was always lovely to me and um, had offered to read through it. Um, I filed a VLCT passive grant for cone signs, barrels, lights, all that. So that would be good, nice shared resource. Um, it does not look like, at this point, we're still unsure about whether or not they're gonna total the freight liner that was, um, you know, damaged in a little, just slid off the road. It was one car accident, just them. So right now we're waiting. It's gone to ATG. They're going to report directly to the insurance company appraiser to figure out if the frame, what's going on with the frame. If the frame's not bent, it looks like we'll probably get just a new body, which would be great. And then when we go to buy a new um, vehicle, we'll just get a chassis and put that on it down the road. So I will let you know as I know that. Um, gathering information on road projects, I wanna have a comprehensive list 
So if you have an issue or know of an issue specifically with a road um, somewhere, just email it to me. Um, I just want to make sure I have a comprehensive list moving forward. So when it comes down to doing the plan for road is also setting out um, uh, hoops to jump through, I guess, for the road crew. I uh, have a list for them for the spring. So I think that was everything. Did, um, Therese, did you get anywhere with um, with Oscar and, and how he built, well, because we're don't have the cruiser right now he's using his vehicle that's yep i asked him about it and he uh, said he was thinking unmarked about, yeah he was he's you know he wasn't sure it's his own personal vehicle so i did talk to him about the magnetic strips and he said he'd think about it. he was thinking about what he called ghosting his truck and i guess you put lettering on it in the same color as your paint i don't know i haven't had haven't seen him for more than two minutes uh to have a conversation with him about it but hopefully it becomes a mute point because uh, obviously if we get a new cruiser, it'll be lettered and that'll right. take care of that. So. so I think it was definitely a valid point. To, since oh, no, and I told him that I told him there'd it, been a concern. There'd been you know, in the past and let him know the history of it. And he was appreciative that I told him that. And yeah. He certainly gives everybody the benefit of the doubt. If someone didn't pull over because they didn't recognize his vehicle, he said, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, Trees. I'm going to let him go or, you know, if, or if they go over down the road where they feel safer, that's fine too. So no. um, he was actually out and in, in, um, uh, of work for five or more days. So um, I will send him a follow-up email because in person we had about, you know, two minutes to discuss it. Um, and that was about it. So, but other than that, I'm all set. All right. I got Abby's in the kitchen, uh, midnight snack in here. So yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Which I haven't had my dinner yet, so it's kind of looking pretty good. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you could hear my stomach. That, that's assuming I can get out of my chair after three and a half hours. I don't even know if I will stand up at this point. Yeah. So no, I don't have anything else um, that I we didn't talk about. Perfect. Okay, uh, select board meeting minutes from the 25th of January. Anybody have any changes to those? Are we good to accept them as noted? Move to accept. Is that Paul? Looks yep. like Paul and Mo said it at the same time, maybe. All right. Paul moved it. Mo, you going to second it? Sure am. Okay. Mo second it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. You know, there was a mishmash of stuff in your packet, really just copies of other um, minutes, et cetera, for you. And um, at the back door um, of the office uh, right now, there's the resolution for you to sign, the liquor licenses for you to sign. And Kelly put out the minute book because you guys right. come in and caught up on all the warrants. So <clears throat> there's stuff at the back door for people to sign. I think the only thing, uh, Therese, that um, stood out to me on the um, budget status report was just the repairs to vehicles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, that's a real thing, and which we knew about. So it's, I mean, we're already pretty much eating up our repair costs for the year, and we're. Yep. You know, well, we, you see, and you know. this is why I put $10,000 more in repairs for the next year's budget. But, you know, this is the problem. You have aging equipment, and when everything is aging at once, you have some issues. So this mm -hmm. year, we're slated, I think, to deal with a one ton, which would be good because that has just become a money pit. And then if we, then depending on what happens with the freight liner. Um, but he's, uh, you know, so far he used his sand budget is spent but he's under on salt so hopefully you know he knows the drill if he overspends one we got to find savings somewhere else so no. that's where we're at so that's the only thing that it. stood out yeah and it's been there and and um so hopefully um i know the one ton has been tough and then the freight liner was a gamble whether we kept whichever one we kept and and so we've mm -hmm. had some issues so Right. 
anything else come before the board? And we're all uh, probably itching to get. <laughs> Keep everybody's hungry. <laughs> there, get to bed. <laughs> so. I move we adjourn. I got cake waiting. Boy, happy birthday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Happy birthday, Paul. Thank He's you, so. that Paul can eat his cake. <laughs> he could have been sitting here eating it the whole time. Just yeah. <laughs> I would have had, had to share then. Yeah. All right. So Mo moved it. Someone second that? I seconded. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, so Paul All right. Well, thank you, everybody that came out. Thank you so much. So yeah, if you guys come by and sign, it's all at the back door. Even if I'm not there, it's, it's there for you. And I fixed the door today, Chris. I got a screwdriver and tightened that up so you shouldn't have any problems getting in and out now. <laughs> yeah, well, just didn't want it to have issues where we couldn't get in there. Exactly. So, all right. Thank you. Alrighty. Have a good evening. You too. Sure.